Tantor Audio, a division of Recorded Books, presents Dragon's Prize by Millie Taden, narrated by Elizabeth Russell. Chapter One Reagan Brooks stepped out of the large transporter and fisted her hands to keep them from shaking. Every nerve felt like a live wire waiting to zap the fuck out of her at any moment. Why the hell was she so nervous? The month-long space flight, and then meeting the Dragon King at the spaceport was a breeze. She was thrilled to be on Daria to help the planet rebuild and grow. A new adventure with the hope of finding a shifter mate who could love her. All those thoughts were fairy tales that she'd clung to a lot longer than she'd liked. The dream of being in a loving relationship, even one arranged for the sake of keeping an alien race from dying out, was all she had hoped for. However, the first time a male pushed her or slapped her around, she was out. She'd put up with that shit from her mother and then her first husband. She'd be damned if she let it happen again. Years of therapy taught her how to recognize toxic people and shove them out of her life. Daria and the surrogate program was her fresh start, a new beginning. She never thought she'd find a connection with anyone, but when the men showed up at the hotel and she locked gazes with him, her insides twisted and flipped. One minute she felt nausea, and the next she was like, come to mama. She was sure she was losing her mind. Rise was his name, and he was sex reincarnated. He had blonde hair that covered the tops of his ears, and green eyes that seemed to look into her soul. His skin was tanned with a hint of an iridescent glow about it, and he smelled of exotic spices. On the drive to what he called the royal estates, she studied his profile and noted along his temples were scales. He caught her staring a few times, which made her insides heat. Standing beside the transport, she glanced around and noted they were inside a garage, but she could smell the sweet aroma of flowers mixed in with clean mountain air. Rise got out of the transporter and bumped into her, his hands going to her hips. She sucked in a breath as heat filled her, starting where his index finger touched her bare skin above the waist of her jeans. Her panties dampened and she fought off a moan. Even though Reagan was curvy, she also had a semi-flat stomach. It was her wide hips, ass, and thighs, along with more than a handful of breasts that added to her curves. She loved her shape and showed it off whenever she was feeling sexy, her husband liked it too, until he started using her as a punching bag. Excuse me. Rise's silky smooth voice washed over her like a velvet touch. She swallowed a groan and had to force herself to move out of his way. He rewarded her with a knee-weakening smile as he passed by her to the trunk. Oh, her bags. She scurried after him to collect her suitcase, but Rise had it out of the vehicle and her overnight bag slung over one shoulder before she reached him. When she held out her hand, he took it in his free one, linked their fingers together, and started walking. She frowned, but didn't let go of his hand. Not what she intended, but she'd use any excuse to touch him. His palm felt good against hers. It was like his energy melded with hers in a beautiful sense of peace and passion. The feeling was unlike anything she'd ever experienced. I can carry my own bags. So can I. He flashed another panty wedding smile and gave her hand a little squeeze. She swore she heard a hint of play in his tone. That made her wonder if she'd been paired up with someone who was as much of a smartass as she was. That would be karma working overtime. She snickered, and when Rise lifted his green gaze to her, she shook her head. Glancing over her shoulder, she met the gazes of her travel mates, Gianna, Vanessa, and Katrina. Each gave a wave as they were led in different directions by the male they were paired with. Or did the men choose them? After all, Reagan and the other women were told they would be going to Wintervale, which was a wolf pack. These men were dragons.
Where are we going? Why weren't we taken to Wintervale? Rise chuckled, mischief lighting up his eyes. We stole you from them. One corner of her lips lifted. So he had a wicked side. Like a practical joke. He turned left down a stone walkway and tugged her to follow. Nope, we're keeping you. He stopped outside a two-story dome-shaped house and faced her. His eyes glowed with an internal magic. You're mine. The wolves can never have you. Her anxiety rose, scaring away all the playfulness. His possessive tone sent a wave of dread and fear inside her. She let go of his hand and stepped back. What does that mean? You belong with me. He reached out to her and she took another step back, shaking her head. I'm not property to belong to anyone. I'm a strong, independent woman. She chanted one of the affirmations her therapist taught her. She tried to take the suitcase from him, but he wouldn't let it go. Give me my bags. I'm going back to the hotel. I, I, I can't do this. Her heart hammered in her chest and the shaking had returned. How did she think she could be happy after a lifetime of abuse? She should have sworn off all men and lived as a hermit with fifty cats. Rye surprised her by letting go of the suitcase and closing the distance between. He framed her face in his large, warm hands so she locked gazes with him. She froze in place. His features softened and he drew his brows together. Why are you afraid? You weren't moments ago. She shook her head and started to tell him she wasn't scared, but he'd know it was a lie. Their sense of smell was too powerful not to pick up on the changes her body went through with strong emotions. I'm not anyone's property to do what they will with. He jerked his head back and dipped his brows. No, you're not property, but you are my mate. That makes you mine. All the air she'd been holding rushed out of her and she relaxed, wanting to cry and laugh at the same time. He recognized her as his mate. She'd read about how they mated and what it meant to them to have a true mate that called to their animals. It was powerful, and once the bond was set in place, they'd go to great lengths to protect their mate. It was all in the lessons she took on the ship during the spaceflight to Daria, but she doubted it was real. Despite the fact that she had a friend on Earth who was mated to a wolf shifter, Reagan's mind wouldn't accept that true love existed. She wanted that kind of connection with someone so deep it touched her soul. However, she hadn't a clue what it meant on an emotional level. Or was she even able to love someone? That's why the surrogate program was so appealing. The shifters on Daria needed mates to bear their young and repopulate the planet. But that wasn't all they wanted. They needed companions to share their lives with. Reagan feared she was too broken to love, but she could share a life with someone, as long as that someone didn't slap her like every other person in her life. Reagan, are you all right? You got quiet on me. Rise touched her cheek with the tips of his fingers. She jerked back out of reflex before she could stop the reaction. When he dipped his brows, she took his hand and pressed it to her face. Sorry, it's a lot to take in. Sorry I freaked. He pursed his lips before leaning in and pressing them to her forehead. The touch was light and warm and did crazy things to her insides. You never need to apologize to me for anything. Much too soon, he stepped away and resumed pulling the suitcase down the sidewalk. The warmth of his body was gone, and she wanted to grab him and snuggle into that warmth. Needy much? His words touched a chord somewhere in her soul. It wasn't the actual words, because Lord knows she'd heard them plenty of times. This was different. Rise was different. The tone he used told her he spoke only the truth. She followed him while watching his shoulders flex and roll as he moved. A smile lifted her lips. At least she could have fun until the honeymoon period was over. 
Chapter Two Rise glanced over his shoulder, catching Reagan watching his ass. Amusement made his lips twitch. His dragon preened while his humanoid half puffed out his chest. He loved for his mate to admire him and watch him with hunger in her depths. When she lifted her gaze to his, her cheeks tinted and another part of Rise's anatomy twitched. Damn, that female was hot. It wasn't enough that her scent drove him wild, but her natural beauty made his body hum with need. She was perfect in an imperfect way. Her hips curved out, begging for his hands to touch. Long, curly red hair cascaded around her shoulders and appeared fiery against her milky skin. When he was inches from her moments ago, he noted the dust of freckles across her nose. No female was as perfect as she was. Tearing his gaze from her, he motioned to the small home, well, smaller than the other homes on the royal estate grounds, he shared with Brazen. Here we are. She stopped next to him and studied the house. When she didn't reply right away, Rise glanced at her. Her lips lifted as she studied the house. Finally, she said, it's a bubble. He laughed so hard he almost dropped her luggage. The house was the shape of a dome with the top half made of glass. Rise loved sleeping under the stars, and he hoped Reagan would also. <laughs> it's more like a dome. The glass has a darkening mode that makes it mirrored on the outside while we can still see out for times when we need privacy. It also keeps the heat of the suns out. He met her stare and waggled his brows. A small laugh escaped her, and her cheeks tinted pink again. Good to know. She focused on the house and stared at it for a few more moments. It's different. He motioned toward the door. Go on, it looks better inside. She moved to the door and hesitated for a moment before opening it. Rise wondered why she paused. He also wanted to know why she freaked out when he said she was his. His dragon wanted to demand answers, but his humanoid half sensed a deep wound much like his own. So he'd have to take it slow with her, show her that he and Brazen would never harm her. Once inside, Reagan glided into the living room and turned in a circle, admiring the layout of the house. The smile on her face told Rye she liked what she saw. Then her words confirmed it. This is incredible. He thought so too. The house was two stories, the rooms on the second floor exiting onto a balcony that overlooked the first floor. Rise moved to the stairs on the other side of the living room. I'll show you to your room, then I'll introduce you to Brazen. Reagan nodded and followed him to the second floor. At the top of the stairs, Rise pointed to the first door. That's my room, then Brazen's and yours is the master suite. She stopped outside her room and glanced at the one on the other side nestled in the corner. What is that room? Brazen has it locked. He's working on some secret project in there. Before you ask, no, I don't know what it is. And yes, it is driving me crazy to find out what's in there. Rise entered her room and set her suitcases in the middle of the floor. When he turned, he noted she was still standing in the hallway staring at the secret project room. Her expression was calculated, as if she were plotting how to get inside the room. He knew that because he too had tried to break into the room on several occasions. He chuckled, drawing her attention to him. Rise waved her inside her own room. You won't be able to break into that room, at least not without Brazen knowing. After all, Braze develops the security software for Night City and the royal estate. He does? Reagan's tone held a hint of excitement as well as interest in knowing Brazen was a techie geek. She entered her room and stilled inside. This is too much. Frowning, Rise glanced around. Too much? She released a soft laugh and drifted to the bed. This room is larger than any I've ever had. Why do I get the master suite? Because you are our mate. 
He closed the distance between them and took her hand in his. And you will be the mother of our children. You deserve the best we can give you. She frowned, and he started to panic, afraid he said something wrong. Then she laughed and squeezed his hand. This isn't anything like I pictured it. I mean, I'm not sure what I expected, really. Everything is new and it's different. He stared into her blue eyes, captivated with the way they seemed to dance with emotions. With his free hand, he cupped her cheek. She tensed as if not expecting the sudden movement. After a moment, she relaxed. Is Brazen here? Yes, he's in his office. Want to meet him? Rise had told her about Brazen on the drive from the hotel. He had a feeling then that she wasn't the type that took well to surprises. He'd been right. He'd have to make sure to only give her happy surprises. She nodded. As long as we're not bothering him. If he's busy, I can wait. Rise studied her through a narrowed gaze and scented the air. Notes of fears and anxiety drifted from her. At the same time, excitement danced in the mix of emotions he smelled coming off her. He wanted to ask her why she was scared, or what she was scared of, but he shelved it for a later conversation again. After all, he knew all too well what it was like to be the newbie among the dragons. Brazen will never be too busy for you. With a gentle tug, he led her down the stairs and across the living room. Brazen's office was next to the kitchen entrance. The door was shut, but that wasn't surprising. Rise pushed the door open, pulling Reagan inside with him. Honey, we're home. We? Rise, if you brought another savage critter in this house. Brazen turned his chair and froze, his eyes locked onto Reagan. Reagan giggled. I've been called a lot of things, but never a savage critter. Brazen cursed and ran his hand through his black spiky hair. The tips of the strands were a dark purple that usually only showed when he was in the sunlight or his emotions were high. I'm sorry, I wasn't. Brazen looked at Rise and frowned. I thought our surrogates weren't arriving for another month. They stole us. Reagan stepped forward and held out her hand. Hi, I'm Reagan. Standing, Brazen took her hand. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry, but I'm confused. He turned his attention to Rise and narrowed his eyes. Explain. Rise rolled his eyes. Madden and I noticed Azar was acting a little weird, so we cornered him at his transporter and found out the dragon who does no wrong was going to the hotel to steal his mate. The rest of us went with him because it's not often that Azar breaks the rules. When we got there, please tell me you sent her as your mate. Brazen slowly nodded. I do. He glanced back at Reagan. Are you okay with this? With being kidnapped by dragons? Sure, it adds excitement to this adventure. Rise could hear the laughter in her voice. It soothed his dragon. Her fear was pushed away for the time being. Brazen frowned and shook his head while brushing past Rise on his way out of the office. You're not being kidnapped. Keon and Voss will have their hands full in the morning. Brazen rounded on Rise. How did any of you think this was a good idea? Rise glared at his best friend and let out a soft growl. The only thing any of us were thinking was there was no way we'd let our mates go to the wolves. Beside Rise, Reagan tensed but didn't move away from them. Snaking an arm around her waist, he pulled her to him. She came willingly and flattened her palms to his chest. Brazen watched them with interest. I'm sorry, you just caught me off guard. Then Brazen turned and disappeared into the kitchen. Rise pressed a kiss to Reagan's cheek. Brazen likes his routines and doesn't deal well when things go off plan. Reagan glanced in the direction Brazen went. Are there house rules I need to be aware of? House rules? Rise remembered asking a similar question when he first moved in with Brazen. No rules. 
Well, be respectful of your roommates. Reagan smiled and shook her head. Some people have rules. She fell silent for a moment before saying, I'm going to unpack and then get some sleep. It's been a long trip. Brazen and I will be here if you need us. Rise released her and watched as she made her way upstairs. His chest tightened, and he didn't like the sudden sadness coming from his mate. After he heard her bedroom door shut, he went into the kitchen. Brazen glanced up when he entered, and Rise crossed his arms. You don't seem excited that she's here. I'm thrilled and anxious. Brazen leaned against the counter and drank a glass of kava. Then what's your deal? You could have given her a warmer welcome. She asked me if there were house rules she needed to know. Rise told himself she was just nervous from being in a new place. But he couldn't help but think she had a tough childhood like he did. Only his wasn't just tough. It was torture right up until his mother was killed and he was left to fend for himself in the wastelands. Brazen released a heavy sigh. Because I'm on the security team for the surrogate program, I know the backstories and other details of each female who comes here. Brazen raised his gaze and made eye contact with Rise. Reagan will need extra care. You can't go at her like you would a normal mate. If you come on too strong or too fast, she's likely to run. What are you talking about? Setting his glass on the counter, Brazen straightened. Reagan lived her whole life fending off abusers. Rise's heart fell to his feet and fury brewed within. She was abused? How bad? Brazen closed the gap between them and clasped him on the shoulder. Similar to the way you were, only it didn't stop when she left her parents. Her husband. Rise stepped away from Brazen and growled. In his own situation, his mother was sick and lost her mind. She took care of him the best she could. What do we need to do? We need to allow her independence, show her she can trust us, and remind her true mates can't harm each other. The latter she learned in the classes she took, so we need to make sure it becomes a reality for her. And most of all, have fun. Brazen left him in the kitchen. Moments later, Rise heard his friend climb the stairs and move past his room. Rise picked up Brazen's kava and downed the contents, then refilled the glass while he gave Brazen and Reagan some time alone. Then they were going to have a sleepover in the master suite. Chapter 3 Brazen knocked on Reagan's bedroom door. Within moments, she answered, her blue eyes locking with his. His body stiffened along with his cock. Her scent was like sweet flowers covered in frost, pure and clean, and it wrapped around him like a warm caress. A slow smile lifted one corner of her full, kissable lips, but he saw the sadness in them. He couldn't help but feel like he added to that sadness. Hi. Hi. He shook out of the trance he fell into. Can I come in? She stepped back. Of course, it's your house. Her words held a hint of humor, but he smelled her hesitation. He also noted how she left the door open when she followed him to the center of the room. He'd expect no less considering her background. The house is actually Rises. He built it. Brazen sat at the foot of her bed and folded his legs in front of him. He rarely wore shoes in the house, and since he worked from home, he was barefooted often. Really? Reagan watched him for several seconds before she inched her way to the head of the bed, carefully putting a good distance between them. Brazen tried not to focus on her movements. He learned from dealing with Rise when they first met to let Rise move at his own pace. It helped him settle in and trust that Brazen wouldn't yell at everything he did, or worse that Brazen wouldn't hit him. Shaking out of the thoughts, Brazen answered her question. Rise designed the house and gathered a team from Night City to help build it. That was before I moved in. Was that before the war? Reagan eased down on the bed and hugged a pillow to her. 
Brazen shook his head. About two years before it ended, we all needed something positive to focus on. At that point, we had Cedric on the run, and most of the battles were outside the cities. But it was too late for our females. He averted his gaze to his hands in his lap. An ache formed in Brazen's chest. He lost his sisters and mother in that damned war. A cool, soft hand covered his, making him lift his gaze to Reagan's. She frowned and her eyes watered. I'm sorry. Thank you. We are moving on, slowly. With you and the other females here, well, it gives us hope for a bright future. Brazen turned his hand over and linked their fingers together. What do you like to do for fun? She shrugged. Read, play video games, and... What? Shaking her head, she glanced down at their hands. When she didn't pull away from him, he scooted closer. The spike of her scent growing sweeter told him she was aroused. Good. Tell me what you were going to say. When I was little, I'd write short stories of an alternate life in a parallel world where there was no sickness, no mean parents, and every day was an adventure. Reagan laughed. <laughs> it's silly. I don't think so. Maybe you weren't making up that world, but dreaming about this one. We can cure most sickness now, and we won't let anyone hurt you ever. And you took the biggest adventure by coming here. I promise each day will be filled with fun and love. Now, do you still like to write? When she nodded, he leaned forward and kissed her nose. What do you need to start writing again? She stared at him for several long moments as if trying to figure out if he was serious or not. A computer with a word program for typing. I'll need editing and binding. We'll research everything that goes into it and work on getting it set up together. Brazen beamed as her face lit up. That sounds great. What else do you like to do? What kind of work did you do on Earth? He knew that she had several different types of jobs over the last ten years. One in particular sparked his interest. Computer programming. And he wanted to see if she'd mention it. Mostly if it was something she liked doing. The light in her gaze darkened a little for a brief moment, then returned when she forced a smile. I didn't have the chance to go to college, so I was limited on finding employment that paid enough to support myself. There was a software development company I loved working for. I'm good with technology, programming, development. She averted her gaze and sucked in her bottom lip. I can hack into just about any program. Ah, Brazen laughed. So that was you earlier today who hacked into the Darien database. She snapped her gaze to his and fear rolled off her. You knew? Wanting to reassure her that she wasn't in trouble, mostly because he knew it was one of the females and she was just exploring the system, he covered her hand and brushed his thumb over hers. I knew the second you broke in. Before then, actually. I sat back and watched you breach my layers of security. I'm impressed, actually. Why didn't you stop me? She held his gaze and began to relax a little. Am I in trouble? No. In fact, I'd like to give you a job. The play of emotions on her features going from confusion to excitement and back to confusion told me she wanted to say yes right away, but was unsure. It was like she was expecting it to be a trap. Rise acted in much the same way when he first arrived at the estate. What kind of job? Reagan watched him. I want you to work with me and the security team for the surrogate program. There are two others I work with, one from Wintervale and one from Silvermoon. Brazen stood and moved to the suitcase she had open on the other end of the bed. Can I help you unpack? She reached forward and closed the suitcase. I can do it later. If you're sure, I just wanted to help. Besides, it would give me a reason to hang out and ask you more questions. He grinned at her, which earned him a soft laugh. Do you need an excuse? Besides, you're on the surrogate security team. 
I bet you already know everything about me. She frowned as if realizing how much he knew. He shrugged, playing it off as if it wasn't a huge deal. Because it really wasn't. I know enough. Computer files and paperwork can only tell one side of the story. What I'm concerned with is how Rise and I will gain your trust. You are our mate. That goes soul deep, and something our kind doesn't take lightly or for granted. Our world will center around you for the rest of our existence. That is, unless you decide you don't want to be our bonded mate. The choice is always yours. Reagan stared into Brazen's gray gaze, not knowing what to say. He had such a calm energy that surrounded him. His eyes were the color of storm clouds, and at the moment, they reminded her of a rainy summer day, soothing yet dark. It didn't surprise her that he checked out her files. After all, it was his job to ensure no psychos entered the program. Plus, she and the other women were there to have their babies. The Darien people needed to make sure their surrogates were healthy and sane, so thorough background checks were part of the deal. Reagan was surprised she was picked at all. She was past caring if people knew she lived through hell from the time she started walking. If it wasn't her mom slapping her around, it was her mom's boyfriend of the week. Then, when Reagan graduated from high school, she thought she was in love with Greg, her first love. Months after they were married, she saw a different side of her husband. The side that used his fists and called her names, tearing her down further than she already was. What do you do for work? She averted her gaze from his. The more she looked into his stormy irises, the more she wanted him. It was strange to feel a desire for not one, but two people she didn't know. They both did say they were her mates, but she wasn't sure what all that meant outside of what she read in the classes she and the others took during the space flight from Earth to Daria and from her own research. However, reading about mating and actually going through it were worlds apart in comparison. I work for Voss and the Royal Estate with information tech and build various software. I love the challenges of creating complex programs. He moved closer and Reagan steeled herself to stay put. They weren't like her mom and every man she'd come in contact with. I've always wanted to learn more about IT and how to build a program. What she knew was self-taught. Breaking into secure online sites and databases kept her mind off the mess of her life. Brazen smiled and it reached his eyes, making them sparkle with excitement. I'm going to teach you everything I know. Leaning forward, his gaze dipped to her lips. Her heartbeat increased. Can I kiss you? Her pulse thrummed in her veins. She nodded, not able to form words. The idea of his mouth on hers excited her and scared her at the same time. She came here for this, so she had to trust them. As soon as his lips touched hers, passion exploded inside her. She deepened the kiss and crawled into Brazen's lap. Instantly, he wound his arms around her, holding her against him. Heat raced through her and her pussy throbbed with need. When they broke apart from the kiss, she caught movement at the door. Rise stood in the doorway holding a tray of food and wine. Kava, as it was called on Daria. His eyes locked with Reagan's, and suddenly she felt awkward. Pushing away the panic, she remained where she was. She couldn't tell if Rise was angry or not. After what seemed minutes, Rise advanced inside the room and set the tray on the bed behind Reagan. Then he kissed her cheek. You didn't have to stop on my account. I was enjoying the view. She felt her cheeks heat and a giggle bubbled up, turning into a laugh. When she stopped laughing, she asked, So you two are okay with sharing me? Yes, Brazen said. Rise added, Hell yeah. Reagan climbed out of Brazen's lap and sat next to him, facing Rise. The tray rested between them, and she noticed it had a few different berries she didn't recognize 
and cheese. At least she thought it was cheese. This looks good. Rise's features brightened. Then he tried to shrug it off like it was nothing. Just put something together. I thought that if you were not too tired, we could watch a movie. Bray's can channel in almost every movie from Earth. That sounds wonderfully relaxing. Reagan picked up a piece of cheese and popped it in her mouth. Rich, creamy flavors burst on her tongue. She closed her eyes and sighed. When she opened them, she met the stares of the two dragons on her bed. Her dragons. She just hoped the honeymoon stage never ended. Chapter Four Reagan woke an hour before sunrise from the best night's sleep she'd ever had. She fell asleep sandwiched between Rise and Brazen while watching a movie. There was something about those two that made her feel safe. Something she'd never felt with anyone. When she woke, the guys were gone and her room was cleaned. The wine, kava, glasses, and the tray of fruit and cheese were gone. Even her suitcase and overnight bag were neatly placed in front of the walk-in closet. Her body had warmed all over at the thought of how sweet it was of them to clean up, but they could have left her a note to where they were. After searching the house and fixing herself breakfast, she grew bored, which was never a good thing. She tended to get into trouble when she was bored. She'd asked the guys if there was a gym close by for her to expend energy to help her focus. At the moment, she stood outside the locked room, trying to figure out how to get inside. Her techie genius dragon had it secured with some kind of security system. However, there was no keypad to enter a code. There has to be a way in. Tentatively, she reached out and touched the wood with her fingertips. When she wasn't shocked by dragon alien magic, she pressed her palm to it and then felt her way to the edge of the doorframe. What are you doing? The sound of Rise's voice made her jump and whirl around. Her heart leapt in her throat and instinct told her to defend herself. A sexy-ass crooked smile formed on his face and she relaxed. What's in there? I told you last night, I don't know. Brazen has the door under a spell, and the inside of the door has an alarm that goes to his calm if tampered with. He lifted his hand and held it inches from her cheek. His green eyes watched her with interest, but she could sense his hesitation. She wondered if it was because of her past. Brazen had admitted he knew, so she assumed Rise did as well. She opened her mouth to speak, then closed it when Rise caressed her cheek with his knuckles. The touch was so soft, so tender. You're beautiful. Heat filled her face and she averted her gaze. I'm average. Sliding his hand to her chin, he lifted so she locked gazes with him. You will never be average to me. I'll make sure you believe you are beautiful if I have to tell you every day of our lives. Then he closed the distance between them. His lips brushed over hers softly. The brief kiss stirred a desire deep in her soul. When he pulled back, she felt the loss of his warmth and almost grabbed his shirt and pulled him to her. With a will she didn't know she had, she resisted. If you're that curious about the room, go ask Brazen about it. When you're done, I'm heading over to the gym. Did you want to come? Excitement at the thought of working out lit up her insides. That sounds great. I haven't worked out in over a month, and I'm starting to feel it. Then meet me out front after you talk with Brazen. He's in the garden walking around. He motioned toward the stairs, then followed her as she made her way to the first floor. Together, they went outside, and Reagan smiled as she walked toward the paths of flowers. Brazen, are you out here? She chuckled lightly when she saw his head pop up over the top of a row of colorful flowers. He waved when he saw her standing there. Come join me. Reagan nodded and walked around the path until she could see his hiding spot. Nice. I didn't realize there were benches in here for anyone to sit on. 
Brazen held his hand out for her, and she took it, sitting on the bench next to him. Every once in a while, he would run his thumb across her palm. He didn't seem to realize he was doing it. Are you okay today, Brazen? You seem quiet and a little sad. He looked over with a smile. I'm happy you're here, but yes, today is a rough day for me. My mom used to love planting flowers and watching them bloom every spring. Today she is fresh in my mind, and I miss her. Reagan blinked back tears and squeezed his hand in hers. Tell me about your family, about growing up here. What was it like? His love for his mom already made him a better man in her eyes. My mom had the most infectious laugh. My sister actually inherited it. I always said she would grow up and break many hearts. His smile waned away. I'm sorry, Brazen, that she never got the chance. Thank you. Anyways, home was filled with love and laughter. I guess my upbringing was the complete opposite of yours. He grimaced, and she could see him eyeing her. I know you read about my history. It's okay. Reagan was okay with him knowing. It helped when she got spooked. Brazen would know why and how to help. I'm sorry to rush off, but I have to get to work. Would you sit out here with me again some other time? Brazen stood up and pulled her to her feet. She leaned in and kissed him on the cheek. It would be my pleasure. Brazen blushed and backed away, never taking his eyes off of her. When he was out of sight, she turned and headed to find Rise. She didn't have far to go. As soon as she exited the garden, he stood there waiting on her. Are you ready to go, love? Reagan nodded and walked toward him. Good. Now tell me, what type of workouts did you do on Earth? And here came the questions. Reagan sighed and stepped outside, waiting for Rise. After my husband died, I started taking self-defense classes and did some weightlifting and cardio training. It was my way of feeling strong and independent. I'm done being someone's punching bag. His fiercely intense stare met hers. She stood her ground, fisting her hands at her side defensively. Rise lifted her hands and uncurled her fingers before placing a kiss in her palms. I want to go to Earth and destroy everyone who had ever hurt you. Something in his green depths told her he understood what she went through. Under his touch, her defenses melted away. In that moment, it was only the two of them. How he and Brazen were able to break through her walls and stir up hopes of a future was beyond her. They are all dead. A light flashed in his eyes and the corners of his mouth lifted. Did you kill them? Her heart stopped for a brief moment and she frowned, averting her gaze. When she didn't answer, he lifted her chin. I was kidding, a little. If you did, we'd skip the gym and go have ice cream or a huge ass cake to celebrate. Laughter burst from her. She wasn't sure if it was his tone or his actual words that made her laugh. My mom shot herself about two years ago. I'm not sure what happened to her boyfriend. Probably in jail. Don't know, don't care. My husband's death was ruled accidental. Rise watched her for several seconds like he was waiting for her to add more to her story. When she didn't, he linked their fingers and tugged her down the walkway. Okay, we'll work out and then have ice cream. She stumbled a few steps before falling into stride next to him. Taking quick glances at his profile, she expected him to be mad or something. But he wasn't. He seemed so relaxed. Get a grip, Ray. Shifters aren't like humans. And this made her trust them just a bit more. The gym was a huge dome-like building and reminded her of a football stadium on Earth. The interior, however, didn't resemble anything from Earth. The floor looked like black glass, but once she stepped inside, it felt almost padded. What is the floor made of? A material that can take on the properties of almost anything. Most of the time, it appears glossy like glass, but it's flexible. 
Rise glanced around before meeting her gaze. What do you want to do? Brazen developed a holosim program that takes the best of a hologram and a simulation to create realistic training. We could use it to kick monster asses. He can create your own personal program if you like. Oh, that's cool. Reagan glanced at the equipment on the far side of the gym. What were you going to do? He shrugged. I was going to run some laps and then fight some monsters. But we can spar if you want. I can show you how to defend yourself against alien shifters. I'm game for sparring, but don't dare go easy on me. Reagan flashed a smile and lifted both brows. A wicked smirk formed on his face as he looped an arm around her waist and pulled her to him. Deal. Chapter 5 Reagan was a lot stronger than he realized. He knew she was mentally tough. She had to be to live through her past. But physically, she was so much more than he expected. He started their session off easy, then had to quickly step it up so she wouldn't know he was holding back. They'd been at it for almost an hour, and she was just starting to show some signs of fatigue. However, he knew from personal experience that letting others know he was tiring was a sign of weakness and could get him killed. She kicked out and twisted, smacking the top of her foot into his side. A slam of flesh on flesh echoed through the gym. He grunted and dropped to his knees. If he didn't stop, she definitely wouldn't. It was too soon for her to trust him not to take advantage of a weak spot. Every step he could take to earn her trust, he was going to. Dramatically, he laid on his back on the floor with his arms spread out on either side of him. Reagan sat next to him and poked him in the ribs. Giving up so soon. He chuckled and pulled her so she fell on top of him. You're getting tired. When she opened her mouth, he placed a finger on her lips. Don't argue. She narrowed her eyes and watched him. It's been a while, and I need to get back in shape. He frowned and let her little white lie go. Well, in that case, your muscles will be sore later tonight or in the morning. I know where there are hot springs where we could relax. Her features brightened and she sat up. Really? But we can't get there by a transporter. You'll have to ride on the back of a dragon. He waggled his brows at her. That sounds amazing. When do we leave? She jumped to her feet, apparently finding a burst of energy. Rolling to a stand, he nodded to the door. Now. When they were outside, he stopped on the walkway that circled the royal estates. Stay here until I've shifted. I don't want to hit you with my tail or anything. Use my wing to climb onto my back. Don't worry about hurting it. Our wings are stronger than they appear. When you are on my back, settle in at the base of my neck. That keeps you from falling off. She nodded and bounced on her toes. He chuckled as he walked into the grass several yards from her. Turning to face her, he winked and then called to his dragon. Magic swirled from within, building. His dragon took control and burst through his skin, growing taller than the buildings around them. His wings burst out of his back and spread wide. Then he looked at his mate through his dragon's eyes. Reagan smiled and slowly walked forward. He lay on the ground and stretched his neck to her and wished he was telepathic so he could talk to her in dragon form. Some mated pairs could, but not many. He wasn't sure humans could hear their mate's dragon. When she reached him, she stroked his snout and the side of his head. It felt amazing to have her hands on him. Then she walked to his wing with her fingers trailing along his scales. She stepped onto his wing, then glanced at him. When he nodded to let her know it was all right, she climbed onto his back, positioning herself at the base of his neck. When he was sure she was secure, he rose, then jumped into the air with a powerful burst. He touched down about fifteen minutes later in the snow-covered mountains north of Night City. There were pools of hot springs hiding in the random places on the sides of the mountain. Reagan slid off his back and he shifted to his humanoid form, 
willing clothes on at the same time. He even conjured a large jacket and draped it over her shoulders. Thank you. She shivered and slid her arms into the sleeves. I didn't think how cold you'd be, but the pools are hot. He pointed to one about a yard from them. And perfect for skinny dipping. Reagan's steps slowed and he glanced at her over his shoulder. What is it? Can I just wear my clothes in? He was about to tease her about being shy, then thought that it was possible she had scars she wasn't ready for him to see. You can, but I'm getting naked. She raked her gaze over him, and he almost came right there. Damn, that female made it hard to contain his need to possess every inch of her. He ripped his shirt over his head and tossed it on a rock near the pool. As he undid his pants and slid them down his legs, he noted how Reagan went still. Her breathing even slowed. Lifting his gaze to her face, he waited the few seconds it took her to make eye contact. She bunched her brows. He knew what she saw. Scars from the beatings he endured as a child till his mother died at the start of the war. It took me a long time to trust again. Who? She breathed and glanced down at his chest again. My mother, mostly. He shrugged and removed his underwear before stepping into the hot spring pool. His back was worse, and he really didn't want to share the ugly side of him. However, their pasts were similar, and if it would help her open up to him, then he'd share anything with her. The sound of clothes being removed made him hard. He waited for her to step into the pool and slide into the water next to him. Ah, oh, this feels amazing. I love it up here. He glanced at her and saw a jagged scar at the base of her neck like something slit her throat. Fury brewed within and his dragon growled. Someone tried to kill their mate. He realized just how different their situations were. He was a shifter, able to heal from most wounds. He was also able to fight back with the force of his dragon. She was human. Even though she wasn't weak, she didn't have the healing power he did. She must have noticed his change in mood because she said, My mom mistook me for an intruder one night when I came home from work late. I was able to fend her off because she was drunk, but not before she sliced the base of my throat. The child services and police took me from her that night. I lived in a foster home for about six months until I turned 18. An ache formed in his chest. It was too bad he hadn't met her when they were kids, which would have been a miracle since they lived on different planets. My mom wasn't well the last few years of her life. She gave in to bloodlust, and I'm sure she was taking dragon ash. That's a lot like drugs on Earth. Only dragon ash would kill a human and make a dragon go out of their mind. I'm sorry. Reagan inched closer to him. He didn't know if it was to comfort him or to seek comfort from him. Maybe a little of both. Me too. He lifted her hand and kissed her knuckles. I thought many times that killing my mom would put her out of misery and her suffering. And mine. Reagan met his stare. Did you? Rise shook his head. Didn't have to. She overdosed. I think it was intentional. They fell silent for several minutes. It was a comfortable quiet. Then Reagan said, I killed my husband. I didn't think about it. He came at me with a knife and I fought him off and managed to get the knife from him. Then I stabbed him in the heart. Reagan hugged herself and drew her knees to her chest. I was so freaked out. The detective assigned to the case ruled it as an accident so I wouldn't be dragged through a trial to prove self-defense. Silence filled the space around them. Rise watched Reagan as she looked around at the snowy mountains around them. Reagan was made for him. That he knew for sure. We're a couple of tortured souls. She let out a breathy laugh and glanced to him. Just trying to survive the hell of a life. How did you come to live on the estate? 
Linking their fingers, he brought her hand to his lips. Azor and Keon, who you will meet later today, tracked me down in the wastelands and arrested me. What did you do? I stole the tea off the Wintervale pack sign. I was young and it was a stupid prank during a time where tension was high between the houses. But in the end, everything worked out. Rise averted his gaze, but didn't let go of her hand. He liked the feel of her skin against his. Reagan seemed to be just as comfortable with him. She sagged against him. You said it took a long time to learn to trust. How did you? It was Brazen's calm demeanor. I butted heads with the other males because they are all alpha personalities and liked to boss me around, telling me what I'll do and how. Rise laughed. Brazen is more beta and has patience enough to deal with me. <laughs> he taught me to focus on what I like to do and that I didn't need to steal my food or clothes anymore. Turning to face him, Reagan leaned in and pressed a kiss to his lips. His body came to life like nothing he'd ever experienced. He'd slept with females before, but none sparked the inferno of desire Reagan did. Reagan pulled back and looked into his eyes. Thank you. For what? For sharing your past with me. For making me feel like this is a wonderful new beginning for me. Wrapping his arms around her, he tugged her into his lap. She straddled him, trapping his impossibly hard cock between them. I'll do whatever it takes to ensure you are happy and safe for the rest of our existence together. Chapter 6 On the flight back, she thought about Rise's past. If a man like him could trust Brazen, then surely she could too. She made up her mind then to jump into a relationship with both men with her eyes wide open and full of trust. She just hoped she didn't live to regret that choice. When Reagan and Rise got home, Brazen was pacing the living room. He met their gazes and frowned. Where were you two? Reagan's defensive shield slammed into place. As much as she fought to keep them open, her past taught her to be wary. She crossed her arms and glared while her insides shook. As if sensing where her mood went, Brazen crossed the room to her and hugged her. Instantly, she relaxed against him. He wasn't mad, just worried. She could handle that, and it proved she was making the right decision. Brazen sighed. Why are you so cold? Rise, what did you do? A giggle bubbled up, and she couldn't stop it if she wanted to. Rise was in trouble. Rise rolled his eyes. Don't make me out to be the troublemaker. Reagan and I worked out, then I took her to the hot springs in the northern mountains. Without warning, Brazen scooped her up in his arms and climbed the stairs. She glanced over his shoulder at Rise following behind them. She shook her finger at him and said, You're in trouble. One broad shoulder lifted in a lazy shrug, but his eyes locked with hers and held a wicked promise of desire. Her insides turned to lava and her pussy pulsed with need. She'd always had a healthy sex drive. In fact, that was the only time her husband Greg wasn't abusive. A light from within Rise lit up his green gaze. You are the one in trouble. She laughed. You were the one who tried to freeze me. I didn't hear you complaining. He winked at her and followed Brazen into her bedroom. Moments later, Brazen tossed her onto the mattress. Anticipation fluttered in her core. She reached for the waistband of Brazen's pants and pulled him closer. Are you going to warm me up? His gray gaze darkened slightly, and damn if it wasn't hot as hell. Not giving him a chance to reply to her teasing taunt, she unbuttoned his pants, then lowered the zipper. He watched her every move, his breathing turning slow and deep. She glanced at Rise. He was watching her too. Being with two men at the same time was new for her, yet the guy seemed to be on board. That encouraged her to explore her wicked side and show them she trusted them. 
She pushed Brazen's pants over his hips and down his thighs, then cupped him through his underwear. His hips jerked, pushing into her palm. She licked her lips, wanting to taste him. Reaching to rise, she pulled him closer as she freed Brazen's thick cock from his underwear. She stroked, slow at first, drawing soft moans from him. The sound of a zipper stole her attention. Rise locked gazes with her and stroked his own cock. He motioned for her to continue with what she was doing. Don't mind me. I never knew watching would be so fucking hot. Not breaking the eye contact with Rise, she licked the tip of Brazen's cock. Both men sucked in a breath and Rise cursed when he exhaled. When she took Brazen inside her mouth, Brazen fisted his hands in her hair and rolled his hips, fucking her mouth as she sucked. His breaths became pants, and she knew he was on the edge. When he tried to pull out, she grabbed his ass and held him in place until he finished. She released him and then lost all control over the situation. Brazen gently pushed her, and she fell onto the mattress laughing. With a quick jerk, he removed her pants and panties. When he covered her with his mouth, passion exploded in her, igniting a desire so hot she thought she'd set the bedroom on fire. Her body ached in all the right places. A soft groan rolled from him. So beautiful. Before she could respond, Rise climbed on the bed and captured one taut nipple in his mouth. Tingles skittered over her flesh and inside her core, she wasn't sure she could take any more before she exploded. She couldn't control her need for both men. It was such an intense emotion. Addictive. Brazen teased her clit with his tongue before he bit down on it. She cried out and lifted her hips. Pleasure rolled through her with each stroke of his tongue. Then he slipped two fingers inside her as he flicked his tongue over the bundle of sensitive nerves. Her body jerked, and she moved her hips in time with his thrusts and licks. Picking up the tempo, he replaced his tongue with his thumb so he could watch her when she came. Come for me, baby. God, that was amazing. He was amazing. Every touch left her body burning hotter, brighter. An inferno had started inside her, a scream ripped from her as the orgasm slammed into her and her body spasmed while her pussy squeezed his fingers. Reagan fell back on the mattress and smiled. Her pussy ached and pulsed like it was begging to have his cock buried deep inside her. Tell me what you want. He crawled on the bed beside her and traced circles around one nipple, sending another hot wave of desire straight to her core. She rolled to her knees, then startled him, taking his hard, thick cock in her hand. I want to ride you until we both come screaming. Fuck yeah, he gripped her hips. She met Rise's desire-drunken gaze. Come here. He rose to his knees and complied with her demand. She took him into her mouth as she sank onto Brazen, taking his full length inside. Hunger rose within her again, building into a throbbing need to have both her guys inside her. Heat coiled in her belly and quickly turned into a wildfire. Desire burned bright at her core. Never in her life would she have guessed two dragons would make her melt. These men were reaching parts of her no other man ever had. She saw the raw hunger in their gazes, intensifying her own. Pleasure rolled through her veins and straight to her core, building her passion and pushing her closer to the edge. Brazen pumped his hips and she increased her own tempo. His body tensed just as her release exploded, dragging her over the edge. Rise and Brazen followed her over with their own releases. Chapter 7 the next morning, Reagan woke to an empty bed. Frowning, she stretched and grabbed her calm from the nightstand beside her bed. It was mid-morning. Why hadn't the guys woken her? Were they unhappy with her? 
Maybe she should leave and find one of the other women. No, no, no. That was the old her talking. Rise and Brazen wouldn't hurt her or run from her if they weren't happy. They were probably working or eating breakfast. She just had to get out of bed and go say good morning. She got out of bed and grabbed the first thing her hands touched and put it on. It was Brazen's shirt. It was like a dress on her, coming just above her knee. She didn't bother putting on any underwear or a bra. After twisting her long red hair into a messy bun, she headed downstairs. On her way to the kitchen, she heard noises as she passed Brazen's office. She took a deep breath and stopped to peek inside. All that sexy, dark-haired man sat in front of two computer screens. She glanced around the room and saw another on the desk behind his. Brazen lifted his head in her direction. A brilliant smile formed on his face, and he waved her inside. Come in. The relief that flooded her system warned her how tense she had been. His welcoming smile was a balm to her soul. I don't want to bother you. I was on my way to grab some coffee. She frowned. Please tell me you have coffee. Chuckling, he rose and advanced to her. We have coffee. It's one of the many things we trade with Earth. He leaned down and kissed her forehead. You're not bothering me. Have a seat and I'll bring you a cup. She opened her mouth to argue that she could get her own, but Brazen shook his head. I know you need your independence, and Rise and I will give it to you. But let us do things for you on occasion. It makes us and our dragons happy that we are taking care of our mate. All right, I can do that. She sat in his office chair and watched him rush out of the room. She swirled the chair around, her heart filling with too many emotions for the short amount of time she'd been there. When the chair stopped spinning, she faced the desk Brazen had been working at when she walked into the office. A pair of earbuds sat to the left of the keyboard. She picked them up and placed them in her ears. Music played so softly, she couldn't make out what type it was. Sitting up, she studied the keyboard and frowned. There weren't any letters on it, just symbols. Well, that bites. She pulled out the earbuds and noted a thick book on the other side of the keyboard. The book was in English, to her relief. Grimm's Fairy Tales. She smirked and opened it. There were small sheets of paper tucked in the pages. Brazen's handwritten notes were about random things that happened in the fairy tale it was placed in. What are you doing? She slammed the book closed, set it on the desk, and sat up in the chair. Her heart hammered and fear sat heavy in her gut. It was an automatic response, and she cursed herself for it. It didn't matter how much she told herself that Brazen and Rise wouldn't hurt her, the expectation of the worst always hung in the back of her mind. Brazen's nostrils flared like he was scenting the air, and then he bunched his brows. He didn't move to enter the office, but he did hold out a cup to her. Coffee. The sudden change in his tone confused her. Tentatively, she reached for the cup. When he didn't throw the hot contents on her, she relaxed and took it from him. The aroma of coffee and chocolate met her senses. You put chocolate in here? Yeah, your files said something about being a chocoholic. I assumed that means you are addicted to chocolate. A spark of playfulness lit up his gaze, making her relax further. I didn't mean to upset you when I came in. She cradled the warm cup in her hands. You sounded mad, and I was being nosy pulling over the chair from the other desk so he could be next to her. Brazen sat and leaned into her until their foreheads almost touched. I wasn't mad. I was trying to be fun. And you can be nosy all you want. If there's something I don't want you or anyone to see, I won't leave it out on my desk. It'll be locked up. Like the bedroom next to mine. The corner of Brazen's lips twitched and something unreadable passed over his features. Exactly. Will you give me a hint what's in there? He shook his head. Nope. Laughing, she sipped her coffee before saying, 
Grimm's fairy tales are my favorite, too. I prefer the originals to the retellings out there, but I really like reading anything fiction that distracts me from the real world. I love to read just about anything as long as I learn from it, and I just started reading fiction. He studied her for a long moment with an expression she couldn't read. Are you hungry? She shrugged. I'm not much of a breakfast person. I usually do an early lunch. Me too. He pushed her chair to the side so he could slide his in front of the keyboard. Roy says I'm a grazer because I'll snack all day. Reagan laughed. <laughs> that works too. Brazen's calm chimed and he hit a button on the keyboard to answer it. Yep. A male voice came over the line. Hey man, I've been thinking. That's dangerous. Brazen winked at her, which made her giggle. Fuck you, the man said. With all the efforts of forming an alliance with the three houses, I'd like to utilize the neutral area. For starters, I want a large hospital that is centrally located and cares for all species, humans included. Vanessa is on board with helping, and Mace is assembling his construction team. I'm heading over to run it by Voss. I know he'll say it'll be up to the council to vote on it. Brazen glanced at Reagan, and the corners of his lips lifted. And you need me to develop a security system. Yeah, since you already have a team built. Brazen hit the keyboard and brought up a messaging app and started typing. I have them on chat now. Shoot me over the details and I'll copy it to them. And by the way, say hello to Reagan. She's my newest member of the Order of the Geeks. Oh, hello, Reagan. I'm Madden, Voss's brother and the Night Flame Healer. Madden paused, then asked, Are you the redhead? Laughing, Reagan said, Yes, that's me. Nice to meet you. Madden said to her, then spoke to Brazen. I'll talk to you later, and we'll send over all the details when I get them. Sounds good. Later. Brazen hung up and typed something in the message app before closing it. Pointing to the keyboard, Reagan tried not to laugh. I hope the computer you get me is in English. He glanced down and back to her. It will be. In fact, it should be here today or tomorrow, until then, I made you a cheat sheet to decipher that keyboard. He pointed to the desk behind his. I get to share your office? Excitement fluttered in her belly. The idea of working with Brazen on a daily basis thrilled her. Yes, unless you'd rather have your own space. No, I'm happy to share your space, but you'll probably get sick of me after a few weeks. She meant it teasingly, but she was afraid that her insecurity leaked into the words. Brazen shook his head. You are my mate. We may disagree because no relationship is perfect, but I'll never grow tired of you. He leaned over and kissed her. She melted into him, cupping his face in her hands and deepening the kiss. A low growl rumbled from Brazen that sent electrifying pleasure through her, she twisted her chair so they faced each other better. Brazen slid his hand up her leg and under the shirt she wore. He broke the kiss with a chuckle. <laughs> You're not wearing underwear. A giddy feeling bubbled up inside her, but before she could say anything, he crushed his mouth to hers. Flutters of pleasure and desire rippled through her. Even though they had sex the night before, and she'd just met him, she wanted more. She leaned into him, deepening the kiss. Brazen groaned and slid two fingers into the folds of her pussy and rubbed. She moved her hips as he rubbed her clit with his thumb and pushed his fingers inside her. Sensations ran wild in her veins. Her orgasm hit her hard and had her jerking against him. Brazen broke the kiss and growled softly as he stood and removed his clothes. He held out his hand, and she took it, only to have him pull her to a stand. Picking her up, he turned and pressed her back to the door. She wrapped her legs around him, trapping his cock between them. He moved his hips back and thrust forward, entering her. The feel of him moving inside her, stretching her, nearly pushed her over the edge. She tightened her legs around him and moved with him, with one arm around her waist, 
He moved the other up her back to fist a handful of hair. A groan escaped her as he pulled the strands to expose her neck. Then he bit her. Sharp pain made her gasp, but quickly turned to pleasure so intense she came harder than she ever had before. He pumped and rolled his hips, slamming into her again and again. Wave after wave of pleasure crashed over her. She wasn't sure how much longer she could hold on, not wanting it to end. Come for me. His command was like a switch. As soon as he spoke the words, her body obeyed. Her climax tore through her, ripping a scream from her. Chapter 8 Reagan sat at Brazen's desk, studying his keyboard and comparing it to the cheat sheet to their language. It didn't take long to realize the keyboard's alphabet was in the same order as keys on the ones from Earth. That made things a lot easier. Then again, Brazen could have made one so that it was similar to the ones she was used to. The idea of learning their language intrigued her, excited her. She loved learning new things and did as often as she could. When she was little, it kept her mind off her abusive mother and her many men. The last thought made her giggle. She had two men. The difference was Brazen and Rise were kind, fierce, and gentle. Now who was going to be her test subject in using this keyboard? She picked up her comm and sent Katrina a message. I'm testing something and will send you a message from Brazen's computer. Use your translator app to read it. Katrina replied almost immediately. Does he know you're on his computer? Should I alert Davin to a possible security breach? Reagan burst out laughing. Ha, you're not funny. Yes, he knows. I'm learning their language. Reagan brought up the chat app on Brazen's computer and squeaked with excitement when it came up. She found Katrina's number and sent her a message that said, Reagan is awesome. Then Reagan found the video chat app and called Katrina. There was no stopping her now. Within moments, her friend's face appeared on the screen. Her brown hair was pulled up into a ponytail, and she had her workout clothes on. Hi. Katrina laughed. Hi. I should warn Brazen that it's dangerous to leave you unattended with his computer. I have permission to hack into the system. Actually, wait for it. I'm working with him and the IT security team. Katrina's features brightened. That's great. Reagan heard the front door open, then click shut. I'll chat with you soon. One of the guys is back. You should come over. Better yet, all four of us need to get together. That would be great. I'll let you know. Katrina frowned, and Reagan guessed it was because her friend knew that Reagan was implying that she'd ask the guys. Out of the four of them, Katrina knew what Reagan had gone through. She had confided in Katrina during their flight, then eventually opened up to the others. It was nice to talk about it to people who weren't judging or trying to analyze her. Relief washed through Reagan when Katrina didn't push for more information. But Reagan figured it would come the next time they were alone. Talk to you in a few. Bye. Reagan ended the video chat just as Brazen entered the office. She met his gaze, and excitement filled her as she saw the box in his arms. When he set it on her desk, she rolled her chair over and started opening the box. Brazen stilled, and his body seemed to stiffen. Reagan's heart thumped out of control, and she let go of the box. What is it? Did I do anything wrong? Brazen reached out to her, and she flinched, which made him frown. He knelt in front of her and gently touched his bite mark. Desires flowed through her. When he didn't speak right away, she worried he was regretting the mark. As she understood it, a bite was something to show off. She'd been claimed by him, and it felt amazing. They didn't form the mating bond or anything, but the mark was a physical sign that she was his. It made her want to bite him back, which was crazy because she couldn't leave a mating mark. It's bruised. Brazen's words were so soft she almost didn't hear them. Was that what he was worried about? It's a bite, 
They do tend to bruise. He shook his head. I bit too hard. I'm sorry. Reagan framed his face in her hands. Don't be sorry. It feels perfect. He kissed her briefly on the lips, then nodded. It should. He hesitated for a moment before standing and motioning to the box. Your computer awaits you. Reagan squealed and tore open the box. It was nice to have some familiar things from Earth that were her own. Thank you so much. No need to thank me. Seeing the smile on your face and hearing the excitement in your tone is my reward. He grabbed the other chair in front of her desk and rolled it over to his before sitting. She watched him as he straightened his desk and moved the things back into place where he had them. Dread rolled in her gut, and she waited for him to lash out at her. Greg would have lost his shit if she'd moved his stuff around. Okay, stop. Brazen isn't Greg. Still, she waited. But Brazen never made a comment. He started working. After she relaxed and turned back to setting up her computer and organizing her desk, Brazen said, Rise comes in here at least three times a week and moves my stuff around. At first, I believed it was to test to see what would make me mad. Now it's become a game with him. So watch your desk. Rise will drive you insane. Reagan giggled, but a lump formed in her throat. The reality that she might have finally broken out of the abusive cycle wrapped around her chest and squeezed. Pushing away her emotions, she said, Noted. It took her fewer than 30 minutes to get her computer plugged in, set up, and the word processing program installed and running, and spent another hour staring at a blank page. She had no clue what to write about. She sent a group message to her three female friends asking for ideas. Gianna suggested that she and the others come to the main house and they could feed her ideas and just have a girl's day. That sounded like fun. Brazen? Yeah. Chapter 9 Reagan turned her chair so she could watch his body language as she spoke. Is it okay if I go hang out with the girls? He faced her and locked gazes with her. You don't need to ask me if you can do things. Just let me know where you are going. And if you leave the estates, we need to know because your presence here on Daria is still too new, and we're not sure of the security risks of letting any of you females off alone. That made sense to her. She leaned over and kissed him. Thank you. When she stood, he handed her a notebook and a pen just in case you get inspired. She kissed him again, letting her lips linger a little longer that time. I'll be back soon. Enjoy yourself. Feeling light on her feet, she rushed out of the office and almost ran into Rise as he entered the house. He wound his arms around her waist and pulled her to him. Where are you off to? A spike of fear burned her insides. She pushed it away and tested her newfound freedom. I'm going to the main house to hang out with the girls. Rise rewarded her with a gorgeous smile. That sounds like fun. Will you be plotting world domination? He pointed to the notebook in her hand. A laugh burst from her. <laughs> of course. Awesome. If you need a growly dragon to help you wreak havoc, just call me. Wrapping her arms around his neck, she kissed him hard. He deepened the kiss by slipping his tongue past her lips. She groaned and pressed into him. When he broke the kiss, she hugged him. Thank you. Anything for you. Exiting the house, Reagan couldn't wipe the smile off her face. The suns peeked out from behind dark clouds, and the smell of rain was in the air. She jogged across the lawn to the main house. When she got close, she heard her friends in the sunroom at the back of the house, so she headed that way. Gianna was the first to see her. Reagan's here. Katrina met her at the door. Everything okay? Yep. Reagan entered the sunroom. I have the worst writer's block. Brazen got me a computer so I can write when I'm not working. Only I have no idea what to do. Vanessa shook her head. 
I'm not creative, so I'm afraid I'm no help. Reagan understood that. Writing wasn't everyone's thing. Maybe I just need to read something to get the juices flowing again. Gianna shrugged. You could start a newsletter or something. Oh, that was a great idea. Reagan made a note in her notebook. Maybe she needed a change of scenery. She'd been on the planet for a few days and hadn't seen much of it. Let's go do something. Katrina pulled out her calm. It is a big planet, and none of us have seen much of it. Gianna and Vanessa nodded, agreeing. Reagan perked up at the idea of going out. What is there to do? To do what? Rise said as he stepped into the sunroom from the house. His eyes locked with Reagan's and every part of her body lit. As if knowing how he affected her, he smiled and stalked to her. Are you looking to get into mischief? Reagan laughed. That sounds fun. Another large man exited the house after Rise that Reagan hadn't seen. He had long auburn hair braided down his back. His green depths appeared haunted. Reagan made a mental note to stay away from that one. Katrina met Reagan's gaze and frowned. Then she pointed to the man. This is Davin, my grumpy dragon. Davin glared at her and folded his arms, but didn't say anything. Just then, Rise leaned over the back of Reagan's chair and pressed a kiss to her temple, then whispered, Davin is harmless. He would jump in front of a bullet for any one of you females. He'd rip the heads off anyone who harms any of you, too. Reagan nodded and changed the subject back to going on adventure. What kind of trouble can we get into? Rise straightened and glanced at Davin. What do you think? Davin lifted one shoulder in a shrug. Crystal region. Rise's face brightened with a brilliant smile. Yes, that's perfect. What is the crystal region? Will we need winter clothing for it? Reagan stood on her knees in the chair while facing Rise. His dark green depths captivated her. He traced her jaw with his fingers as he spoke. No winter clothing, and if I told you what it is, then the surprise would be spoiled. He glanced to the other women. All of us going? Davin pulled out his calm. After a few moments, he put it back into his pocket. Keon and Azar will meet us at the garage. Rise held out his hand to Reagan. Let today's adventure begin. Excitement filled her. She didn't like surprises because it usually meant she ended up with a beating, but she had to trust that Rise didn't have that kind of surprise planned. When she hesitated to follow the group out of the sunroom, Rise turned to her. His mouth dipped in the corners. He tucked her hair behind her ear and let his palm rest on her cheek. This will be a wonderful surprise that will leave you in awe at the beauty of it. Then he leaned into her so their noses touched. Just think about the name of the region. That is the only hint you get. Crystal region. The image in her mind was caverns of gems. Something told her it was so much more than that. Chapter 10 The crystal region was nothing like Reagan pictured. There weren't just caverns with gems. The entire land was covered in multi-hued crystals. Large rock configurations had crystals jutting out of them. Everywhere she looked sparkled. Rise took her hand and tugged her forward. This is just the entrance. Wait until you see what's inside the region. This is amazing and beautiful. Reagan walked through an archway formed by two of the rock formations and into another world. It took her a few minutes to realize it was an entryway. Once they exited the archway, they stepped into a tunnel a few yards long. Her pulse quickened. Bright green grass covered the land except for a narrow path made from multicolored stones that made a trail through the wide open region. Flowering trees and bushes were scattered as far as she could see. Colors of pink, red, blue, and yellow 
The flowers looked to have tiny gems embedded in their petals and sparkled in the sunlight. The trunks of the trees had tiny crystals in them as well. She'd never seen anything like this before. It was straight out of a fairy tale. Raz stopped and stared at her. When she met his gaze, she asked, What? Just admiring the beauty. Her cheeks heated and she playfully pushed him. Then why are you looking at me? Because you are beautiful. When she opened her mouth to argue, he placed a finger over her lips. Don't argue with me. Just agree because you know I'm right. She laughed and pushed him again. He wasn't expecting it and lost his balance, stumbling back several steps. He lifted his gaze to hers and darkened, changing to his dragon's eyes. Her heart dropped to her feet. I'm, I'm sorry. She took a couple steps back, her body shaking. This was it. Finally, she had done something to piss him off. She'd have to leave because she couldn't stay with someone who abused her. She wasn't that person anymore, and she refused to be that person ever again. Too fast for her to track, Rise grabbed her arm and pulled her to him so her back pressed against his front, while wrapping his arms around her in a tight hug. Then ever so gently, he kissed her neck and whispered, I can never hurt you no matter what you do to me. I will never raise a hand to you. She sagged against him. But I saw your dragon in your eyes. He chuckled. <laughs> That's because he thought you were playing, which you were, and he wanted to play too. But not now, and not when you're still so unsure about me and Brazen. When you're ready, I'll let him out to play. She was being paranoid, and she needed to stop and trust her dragons. It'll take me some time. We've got all the time you need. He gave her a quick kiss on the mouth and then stepped out of her embrace, not letting go of her hand. Now let's go have an adventure. Rise gave her a gentle tug, walking down the path. That was when she noticed the others had gone ahead of them, most likely to give them privacy to talk. Reagan appreciated it. Katrina turned and met her gaze. Reagan nodded and motioned for her to turn back around. All the earlier tension in her muscles washed away, and she leaned in to rise as they walked along the stone-covered path. What kind of adventure awaits us today? Reagan asked. That is another surprise that you will not get a hint for. She pinched him in the side and gave him a fake pout. Fine. I can wait. The one thing Rise didn't tell her was that they had to hike to this surprise adventure. Up a mountain. She liked to exercise and ran every once in a while. She used to run every morning, but she was not prepared to hike over boulders and up a small mountain. When they reached near the top, the muscles in her legs burned, and she was glad when they finally stopped. Catching her breath, she looked out over the land to see everything shimmering. It was so incredible and amazing. And then she glanced down and saw four huge slides like water park slides built into the side of the mountain. She turned to meet Rise's gaze. Is there water at the bottom of those slides? Not really. He glanced at the other guys as if unsure how to explain it. Keon spoke up. It's kind of like, what do you call it? Jelly? Anyway, each slide goes into a different part of the cavern underneath the mountain. At the bottom are pools of liquid jelly that you will launch into. You can breathe while inside the jelly, so don't panic. But each of your mates will be there with you in case you struggle. Reagan glanced at Rise. Her anxiety started to rile itself up. That didn't sound fun. Memories of the time her mom tried to drown her surfaced, and she turned to Rise and whispered, I don't think I can do this. We'll go down together. He stepped close and framed her face so they made eye contact. My first time going down the slides, I panicked. I had a fear of water because my mom used it as a punishment. You can breathe in the jelly. It's like floating and swimming at the same time. It's really weird and cool. 
She studied the slide they stood over for a long while before giving him a short nod. Okay, let's do this. But if I die, I'm coming back to haunt you all. Katrina laughed. Don't make me push you. When Reagan met her teasing gaze, Katrina added, It's not water. Reagan relaxed. It wasn't water. As soon as the realization settled into her mind, she was ready. She whirled around to face Rise. It's not water. She punched him in the arm and then jumped on the slide. See you at the bottom. Chapter 11 Reagan pushed off and soared down the slick crystal slide. Her belly was doing flips, and the thrill of falling made her laugh like a crazy woman. The cool air felt like it was charged by magic as it flowed around her and through her hair, which would be a tangled mess by the time she got to the bottom. Darkness surrounded her as she entered the mountain. Her eyes hadn't adjusted to the dark cavern before she hit the jelly like a bullet. Surprisingly, the so-called jelly wasn't as thick as she imagined. It felt more like moving through soupy mud than jelly. However, trying to breathe was another thing. She knew she could breathe, but her brain wasn't getting with the program. She swam up. At least she thought it was up, and desperately tried to get to the surface. All she saw was darkness. She couldn't find the way out. Panic made her heart beat rapidly, and she struggled to think. She was going to die. Rise lied to her and was trying to kill her. A hand touched her leg, and she screamed in her head and jerked away from whoever or whatever touched her. Her body started seizing, and her lungs burned from the lack of oxygen. Rise appeared in her line of sight. Even in the dark, she could see him. His brows were drawn together, and he framed her face. Breathe, Reagan. She shook her head. Wait, how is he talking? It's not a liquid. It feels like it, but it's not. It's hard to explain. He rubbed circles on her temples, which relaxed her. Trust me, please. I would never lie to you. His words touched her heart in ways no others had. Rise is not Greg. She repeated that statement over and over in her mind. Greg was a self-centered bastard. Rise was her mate. Fated by the gods? The universe? Who the fuck knew? Reagan needed to trust her mate to protect her. She took a small breath and sagged against Rise as she realized he was telling the truth and not trying to kill her. God, she was so stupid and fucked up. I panicked. Sorry. He hugged her. I told you I panicked the first time. And don't apologize to me. Ever. He winked and tugged her in the opposite direction from where she was going. Had she got turned around? It's so dark. The only thing she could see was him, and not very clearly. I can see. He tapped his temple. Night vision. Of course. He was a predator, after all. They broke through the surface of the muck, and Reagan took a deep breath out of reflex. She laughed at herself and then waved Rise off when he gave her a raised brow. My mind still thinks that's water. One side of his mouth lifted in a crooked smile. Then he swam to the edge of what she then realized was a pool. She followed and pulled herself out of the muck and sat on the edge. Wow, this is amazing. Crystals poked out of the cavern walls and glowed, illuminating the space with a soft bluish light. I love it here. Rise pressed a shoulder into her. And it's quiet, peaceful. She listened and slowly nodded. It was. Thank you for bringing me here, even though I thought I was going to die. Rise chuckled. I would never let you die. Brazen and I never dreamed that our surrogate would be our fated mate. We'd learn to love and cherish you even if you weren't. But the fact that we can one day connect our souls, that is a blessing. The truth in his words struck her dead center in her heart. 
In that moment, she knew exactly what it meant to be a mate for a shifter. Two shifters. It opened up a different part of her, one that had been suppressed all her life like it was waiting for the right time to bloom. The ability to love and trust another. She cupped Rise's cheek and kissed him softly. I feel like I've come home, like this is where I was always supposed to be. Is that weird? He shook his head. No, you are feeling the mating pull and starting to open your heart. He was right. She had new friends she trusted with her darkest secrets, something she'd never done until meeting the other women she traveled to Daria with. Damn it, she could learn to trust her mates. No, she would trust her mates. Her fears and insecurities be damned. Show me everything you love in this world. Reagan stood and walked around the cavern, taking in the beauty. Then she turned and faced Rise, who had followed. Can we move here? Rise laughed harder than she'd heard him since she arrived. I asked Brazen that same question. But unfortunately, we can't. This land is to remain as it is. She understood what he meant. If people moved to this area, it would lose its beauty, because no matter what race, people and aliens needed to use the resources within the land to live. Rise pulled her to him so her back pressed against his front, then wrapped his arms around her. But we can visit as long as we don't disturb the natural order of things. Yay! She turned and kissed him, loving the way he instantly responded to her and let her set the pace. Come to think of it, he and Brazen had always let her lead. That was something Greg never did, not even during their honeymoon period. She may be on an alien planet with her alien shifter mates, but she was home. A new beginning where new adventures awaited her. Chapter 12 It had been a few weeks since Rise took Reagan to the Crystal Region, and she was already planning their next trip there. The next time, both her mates would be there. She smiled at the thought of calling them her mates. They were hers. The last thought made something primal and wicked uncurl inside her. Reagan, you all right? Vanessa asked from across the table. They sat outside a cafe on the river not far from the royal estate having lunch. Brazen, Davin, and Keon sat a few tables over from them. They did that to give Reagan and the other women a sense of independence while watching for threats at the same time. Reagan knew that wasn't the norm for them, but with Arden running around making threats against Voss and Gianna, Reagan was glad they were close by. Reagan glanced at Gianna and admired her strength. She'd almost been killed by the psycho Arden after being led into a trap at the top of the North Mountains. It was a good thing Davin was there to catch her when the cliff crumbled from underneath her. Remembering that Vanessa had asked a question, Reagan turned her attention to the doctor. I'm fine, just lost in thought of how much has changed in such a short time. At least a lot had changed for Reagan. The waiter came by with a bowl of ice cream for each of them. Reagan instantly glanced at Rise, who met her stare with a frown. She pointed to the ice cream, and he shook his head and got up from his seat. Don't eat it. Katrina stood and started collecting the bowls, then flagged down the waiter. We didn't order these. By that time, Davin, Brazen, and Keon were at their table. Davin took one of the bowls and sniffed the contents. Who sent these? The waiter paled and shook all over. I'm not sure. I assumed one of you, and I was wrong. Reagan drifted to Brazen and placed a hand on his back. His muscles were tight, and she swore she felt the hum of power under his skin. His dragon. Moving her hand down his back, the dragon followed. She traced her finger up to his shoulders, then from one side to the other until Brazen faced her. He lifted one brow. What are you doing? She pressed her palm to his pecs. Your dragon is following my hand. He chuckled and shook his head. 
Because the ice cream was poisoned, which puts you in danger. My dragon wants to make sure you are okay. I don't eat food that is ordered for me. If I didn't order it, I send it back. Reagan lowered her hand, then slid it under his shirt so she could feel his skin. Tingles of magic nipped at her palm and fingers. Movement from the front of the restaurant caught her attention. She motioned with her head. Who's that? Davin and Keon cursed, then Davin took off after the man. When Reagan met Brazen's stare, she saw a mix of fear and fury in his depths. If Brazen was angry, shit just got serious. He circled her waist with his arm and waved Gianna in front of them. When Gianna moved ahead, Reagan reached for her hand. Within minutes, the restaurant was crawling with enforcers. Brazen ushered Reagan and Gianna toward the estate. Keon, Vanessa, and Katrina followed. Although Katrina kept glancing back as if she wanted to help with tracking down that guy, whoever he was. Who was that? Reagan asked again. Brazen said, Rin, he's Arden's right hand. Reagan pursed her lips. Arden reminded her a lot of Greg. She wasn't sure what it was, but the first time she saw him, warning bells sounded in her head. She soon found out why. He was no better than Greg. A bastard. She'd be damned if she let another man send her running or make her live in fear. How do we take care of Arden and his ice cream spiking minion? Gianna giggled, then started laughing. I want to know that too. Brazen stopped in the middle of the sidewalk and glanced from Gianna to Reagan. Are you too serious? Yeah, they said at the same time. Katrina, Keon, and Vanessa stopped next to them. Katrina said, I'm in. Vanessa shrugged. I don't fight, but I won't heal him. There will be no taking care of Arden unless the enforcers do it. Reagan looked up and met Voss's stare. He gave a slight nod, then focused on Gianna as he pulled her into his arms. Come inside. We have unspiked ice cream. They had their frozen treat in the sunroom of the main house. Reagan's thoughts were on rise, especially after the enforcers returned and reported to Voss and Keon about the coward Rin. They'd discovered an employee in the restaurant that was loyal to Arden and took him into custody. But Rise hadn't returned. Reagan had messaged him several times with no reply. Her nerves were a twisted mess. She'd been focused on her calm, trying to track Rise's calm and not paying attention to anyone around her. Brazen leaned over her, putting his face in hers, making her jump. He frowned. What's wrong? Can't get a hold of Rise. She showed him her calm. And his GPS on his calm is off. Brazen's eyes lit up from within as his dragon flashed in them. He straightened and pulled out his own calm. After rapidly typing, he put it back in his pocket and disappeared inside the house. Reagan followed. She found Brazen in the living room talking with Davin and Keon. Davin shook his head. He was right behind us. I figured he went home, but you know, Rise, it's not unusual for him to get back at Wren for threatening his mate. He's done worse. Reagan stepped beside Brazen and crossed her arms. What does that mean? Davin was unfazed by her tone. Rise is a thief. Well, was. But his skills come in handy from time to time. Anyway, he is also protective to his family. You are his mate, but I've noticed that he's also claimed the other females as well as the rest of us as his family. You mess with family. You mess with his wrath, Reagan finished David's statement. She understood that. He could have asked for backup. Meeting Brazen's gaze, she added, I don't have a good feeling. We need to find him. David and I will go. Reagan shook her head. I'm going. He's my mate, and I need to know he's safe. Her own words sounded foreign coming from her mouth, but they were true. Rise and Brazen would do anything to track her down. 
She was not going to sit back and worry herself sick while they search for Rise. Davin chuckled, which surprised her because the head enforcer had always seemed way too serious. She's a strong female like my Hellcat. If she doesn't go with us, all she has to do is mention it to Katrina and the females will plot their own rescue search. Brazen sighed and studied Reagan for several moments. Fine, we need to leave now. His phone has been turned off or it's broken. Reagan's heartbeat sped up and her inside shook with worry and fear. What if something had happened to him? What if Rin had killed him? No, she refused to believe that. They would bring her mate back. Please let him be okay. Chapter 13 Rise snarled at the fucked hard grinning at him like he won a prize. Rin thought he was smart by destroying Rise's calm. Like that would stop Brazen from finding him. Brazen could track Rise anywhere because they were bonded. It wasn't a mating bond, but more like an adopted sibling bond. They had linked their minds, and in a way, their souls, months ago when they decided to be roommates and share a surrogate. It was Rise's idea. He and Brazen had an instant connection, and Rise didn't know at the time why, but he felt like he needed to form the brotherly bond with Brazen. Maybe it was for this moment. Or maybe it was for Rise's own sanity and need to feel like he belonged to a family. You're pathetic, Rise growled and watched Ren move around the dirty cell he held Rise in. Ren shook his head and pointed at Rise. It is you who is pathetic. I knew you couldn't resist coming after me. You fell right into my trap. Not a very well thought out one. Rise sensed Brazen closing in and smiled. So killing the females was, what, Arden's plan? And you wanted to capture me so you can have your wicked way with me? Ren recoiled. Fuck you. Rise shrugged. Untie me and I'll show you the time of your life. Shut up. Ren began to pace. Rise laughed. He had successfully thrown Ren off his game. Then again, Rin had no real plan. You ever get tired of being the fuckboy? First you follow Cedric around like a lost puppy. Now Arden, I thought you'd start up your own rebellion by now. In a flash of movement, Rin was inches from Rise with his hand wrapped around Rise's neck. I said shut up. Oh, I touched a nerve. Rise slammed his head into Rin's, sending the male crashing to the ground. You tried to kill my mate, and you will pay for that. Then I'll go after Arden. Just then, Brazen burst through the cell door. Davin, Keon, and Reagan followed him inside. Brazen picked Rin up from the ground and threw him across the room. Rin slammed into the wall and slid to the floor. Then the crazy ass started laughing. <laughs> so it's true. The two of you are bonded. Thank you for confirming that little bit of information. Now Arden and I know what we're dealing with. Then Ren disappeared into thin air. Rise stared at the spot where Ren dematerialized. How the hell? Reagan rushed forward and tugged at the chains. We need a key. Davin moved up beside her, and Rise saw the slight movement in Reagan as she put some space between her and Davin. It wasn't exactly a flinch, but Rise recognized it for what it was. She was unsure about Davin. Who wouldn't be? The dragon was vicious on his good days. If Davin noticed her reaction, he didn't show it. He gripped the cuffs of the chains in his hands and jerked outward, breaking them. Freed from the restraints, Rise gathered Reagan into a tight hug and buried his nose in her hair. You shouldn't be here. Neither should you. He didn't have time to respond before the building they were in was overrun by Arden's army. Rise tucked Reagan behind him and fell into a crouch, waiting to attack. First, they needed to get out of that damned cell. 
Reagan, I need you to stand behind Devon for a moment. Brazen? On it. Brazen stood beside him and pressed their shoulders together. On the count of three. Behind them, he heard Keon fighting off the soldiers, buying them some time. Three, Rise said, and together they formed a large fireball between their hands, adding flames and power behind it. Two, one. Brazen finished the countdown and they thrust the ball of fire at the back wall of the cell. As it hit, they added a blast of energy they drew from the planet's core. The blast was bigger than they'd intended. It shook the whole damn building. Everyone out! Rise whirled around and panicked when he didn't see Reagan. Piles of rock and debris covered the cell floor. One stack started to rise, then chunks fell off the top like a rock slide down a hill. Then Davin uncurled from his protective stance around her, concrete and dust rolling off his back. Reagan stared up at Davin, and Rise saw the hesitation and fear she had for the larger dragon melt away. There seemed to be a silent trust formed between them. Rise owed Davin big time for protecting his mate. Right then, Rise's concern was getting Reagan out of there before she was caught in the crossfire. He grabbed her arm and tugged her to the opening in the wall. Once outside, Rise cursed as he saw a group of wolves racing toward them. Rise threw out his hands and formed a wall of fire to stop them, at least for a little while. He turned to Reagan. Time to go. She glanced at the building. Brazen, Davin, and Keon were still in there, fighting off Arden's lackeys. What about Brazen and the others? They will catch up. Rise shifted into his dragon, then lay down so she could climb onto his back. After a brief hesitation, she crawled up on his neck. Rise let out a roar to let the other males know he was leaving. There were too many of Arden's soldiers for them to fight alone. It was one thing when it was just Rin and him, but not the minions. Moments later, three dragons burst through the roof of the building and joined Rise in the air. Together, the four of them breathed fire onto the building and the surrounding area. There were no villages nearby to worry about, thank the gods. When they touched down at the estate grounds, Reagan slid off his back and moved so they could shift back to human. He barely had conjured clothes to cover his body when she rushed at him, throwing her arms around him. He kissed the top of her head. Why did you come after me? Lifting her head to meet his stare, she frowned. Why did you go off and get yourself captured? He chuckled. Fair enough. Brazen is in trouble then for letting you go. Reagan pinched him in the side. I would have gotten Katrina involved if he left me behind. Yeah, that would have definitely happened. After a heavy sigh, Rise framed his mate's face in his hands. I do crazy things to protect the people I love. This is my family, and no one hurts my family. She rose on her toes and kissed him. For the first time in my life, I have a family, and will be right there with you and all the crazy to keep this family safe. Clarity opened in his mind like all of Reagan's walls started to crumble away. This may be too soon for you, and you don't have to answer, but I'm falling hard in love with you. When she opened her mouth to speak, he put a finger over her lips. Don't say anything. I'm not going to push. We have a long lifetime together. Many, many adventures to go on. She smiled and her eyes sparkled. Yes, and I look forward to every one of them. Chapter 14 It had been several months since Reagan started her new life on the alien planet Daria with her dragon mates. A lot had happened, the new hospital was up and somewhat running, with only four, no, five humans, counting Gianna's mom, Brenda, living on the planet. There wasn't an immediate need for the facility. However, Madden and the other healers wanted it to be complete before the next group of surrogates arrived, which were due in a few weeks. 
Reagan and the other women were wrapping up the prep work for the festival that would bring the dragons, wolves, and cats together for a celebration for the first time in decades. Maybe longer. Reagan couldn't be more excited to be a part of it all. As long as Arden and his asshat bastard minions didn't screw everything up. However, Reagan and the others expected it and were planning on some kind of an attack especially since Rin hadn't tried to poison any of them again. A light knock sounded on her bedroom door. Come in. She sat her tablet down and glanced at the door. Rise entered and his eyes roamed over her, a slow, sexy smile lifting his lips. She shivered and heated at the same time. She'd been up for about an hour and just didn't feel like leaving her room. So she decided to work from bed, wearing a tank top and thong. She was lying on her belly and knew her tank had ridden up, exposing her ass. Watching Rise cross the room to her, Reagan tried to play it cool. But inside, she was squealing with anticipation. Rise was playful. During sex, he liked to be in control and playfully rough. And she loved it. She'd never thought she'd like to be spanked or bitten during sex, especially with her abusive past. With Rise, it was oddly sensual and gave her a sense of power. She knew all she had to do was say no and he'd stop. Because she'd come to realize that her fears were all in her head, and she knew Rise and Brazen would do anything to keep her safe, which no one had ever cared to do in her whole life. When Rise reached her, he smacked her ass and she turned onto her back and wrapped her legs around him, pulling him on top of her. He groaned and thrust his hips into her core. Too damn bad he had on clothes. Then he fisted her hair and pulled so her neck was exposed. Why did you lock yourself in your room this morning? The door isn't locked. With your hearing, you knew when I woke up. You could have come in any time. She wiggled her hips, drawing another moan from him. He kissed her neck and released her hair. So you're okay? She smiled and stared into his green eyes, knowing why he asked. Reagan knew she got quiet when her emotions rode her hard, but it was nothing like it used to be. Sometimes she just liked to be alone. I feel great. I wanted to enjoy the fact that I don't have to rush to make a meal and fear it will be all wrong. I can oversleep and be woken in the most amazing ways. There was a little voice in the back of her mind that kept saying, this won't last, the honeymoon period will end and they will turn on you. But Reagan learned to push that little demon of doubt into a dark corner and kept it there. Rise studied her for several moments until he was sure she was okay. Do you still feel like going out? I guess. Where to? She traced a finger down his cheek to his lips. He opened his mouth and gently bit her finger, drawing it into his mouth and sucking. Tiny pinpricks skittered over her flesh. Brazen and I are going to the range for a little target practice. They have trails where we can go for a walk or a jog, whichever you like. She pushed at him to get up, and he fell dramatically onto the bed beside her, she laughed and rolled her eyes. There was no way she could push him that hard because he was freaking heavy. Will you teach me to shoot? She'd never owned a gun or shot one. Part of her was afraid she would have shot her husband while he slept if she did. Then she would have spent the rest of her life in jail. At times, that idea was more tempting than others. She got lucky that the detective who came out when she stabbed her husband was a shifter and had pulled some strings. Rise lifted both brows and pressed his lips into a thin line. I don't know. You're not planning to off one of us, are you? She pinched his nipple through his t-shirt. No. Too fast for her to track, he wrapped his arms around her and tugged her to him. The motion sent both of them tumbling off the bed onto the floor. Rise twisted at the last minute so he would break her fall. That was when they heard footsteps. Brazen appeared at the foot of the bed and stared down at them, his lips twisting with humor. 
Are you two done? Rise lifted her shirt. She's been naughty and needs a spanking. Brazen chuckled and bent down. Instead of hitting her ass, he lifted her to stand and kissed her. Get dressed. Something to work out in. She gave him a peck on the cheek and rushed to the walk-in closet that was twice the size of the room she had on Earth. Once dressed in a pair of purple leggings and an oversized t-shirt, she sat on the bed and pulled her shoes and socks on. Rye said you two will teach me to shoot. If you want. Brazen glanced at Rise. As long as you don't shoot us. She thought about throwing her shoe at him, but she needed it. Rise would most likely take it and hide it like he did her hairbrush when she threw that at him the other day. She still hadn't found it, so she stole his. Ha, you two are not funny. I would like to know how to handle a weapon on the chance I need to defend myself. There is still a lot of tension between you and the wolves. I haven't figured out where the cats stand. As you should. Brazen held out his hand. Come on. We can use Rise as target practice. Now that sounds like fun. She linked their hands together and rushed out of her room and downstairs. Chapter 15 The range wasn't anything like Reagan imagined. It wasn't just a shooting range, and it stretched for what seemed like miles. Rise showed it to her on the map as they drove. It looked to be about a hundred acres, maybe more. When they parked, Rise pointed out the different activities as they branched off the main walkway. There was a paintball area, hiking paths, the shooting range, and a gym for indoor exercises and games. Mace, the wolf alpha's sentry, and Rise designed the range. It was the first property to be converted into combined ownership between the houses. At first it was used so wolves, cats, and dragons could come train together. Not many use it, though. Brazen placed a hand on her lower back as they made their way to the entrance. Rise grunted. We hope now that the surrogate program is proving to be a success, more will come and get to know each other. I think the festival will help too. Reagan hoped the festival was a success. The girls and I are certain it will at least be a start. If not, then we'll have to find something they can't help but be curious over. In that case, you should set the date at the same time as the welcome event for the new surrogates, Brazen said as they stopped at the building that housed the weapons. That's a great idea. I'll bring it up at our meeting tomorrow. She threw her arms around his neck and jumped up to wrap her legs around his waist. His arms twined around her back, and she felt Rise move up behind her. We could go inside and lock the door. Reagan laughed and leaned her head back so it rested on Rise's chest. I'm game. Just then, an icky feeling passed over her. The feeling of being watched sent a cold shiver up her spine. Her laugh turned into a frown. Brazen touched her cheek. What's wrong? I don't know. Then she saw him. Standing in the open shooting range and watching them, was a man Reagan was sure didn't have a friendly bone in his body. His black hair had silver strands and fell to his shoulders, but it was his eyes that made Reagan want to leave, which was ridiculous because she didn't back down from people. It took her six years of marriage to learn to stand firm on her feet. Rise growled. What the fuck is he doing here? Brazen lowered Reagan to her feet and moved her behind him. She frowned and moved to stand next to him. It was clear this Rin guy wasn't liked. Then again, Arden was responsible for Gianna's kidnapping and blew a hole in the front of the mansion. Then the crazy son of a bitch tried to get a seat on the council. Arden's crazy must be contagious. Then again, that fucker looks crazier. She nudged each of her guys. Come on, are you going to teach me to shoot? Maybe I'll accidentally shoot him. Rise threw his head back and laughed. You are definitely my mate. Brazen kissed her temple. No shooting the crazy tiger. Reagan gave him a fake pout. 
You take all the fun out of it. Chapter 16 Brazen sat at one of the outside tables at the Dragon's Nest, a restaurant on the river on the border of the estate's property, with Davin, Keon, and Bala. They were to go over the security software for the new hospital. Davin and Bala had tested the system last week. Neither could breach it. Bala was Arden's nephew and half dragon, half wolf. He was also on house arrest of sorts because he tried to kill Davin. Bala believed Davin was responsible for the deaths of Bala's family and the entire wolf village. He learned that it was all lies his uncle fed him, using Davin's memory loss of the events. Once captured, Bala agreed to go through treatments for an illness that ran in Bala's family and work with Davin and the enforcers to take down Arden once and for all. You should send Rise and Reagan in, Bala suggested. I can send Rise to test it, but Reagan helped build the system, so she'd get in even if I changed all the codes. As if hearing her name, Reagan glanced at him from two tables over. She and the other females were wrapping up the final preps for the festival. But by the way they laughed and giggled, he guessed they were done. He even heard bits of baby names being mentioned. Gianna and Vanessa were pregnant and drew too much attention from the other males. It was natural for others to be curious because it gave them hope for a future. It still didn't stop Keon's growls when one walked by and stared at Vanessa and Gianna, since Azar nor Voss were there. Davin sat back in his chair and stared at Bala. The two of them were working on being friends. That was, if Davin had friends. Although since he mated with Katrina, the male had relaxed a lot. A few months back, Bala was under the influence of his uncle Arden. Bala believed Davin killed Bala's pack and his family. When the truth came out, it was Bala's father and Arden's twin brother who slaughtered the Din and the dragon village nearby. There was a sickness that ran through Bala's family that caused the males to go rogue. He was currently under Madden's care. The healer was hoping to find a cure for the disease. Davin tapped his finger on the table. How was treatment going? Bala glanced from him to Brazen and then to Keon. Okay, I think. I mean, the aggression is calmer. My dragon and wolf aren't fighting me as much. That was another thing. Bala's mother was a dragon shifter, a secret Bala guarded most of his life, until recently. His dad made him suppress his dragon half, which could have been one reason Bala was going crazy. Davin nodded and glanced to the table where the females were. Have any news on Arden? I think he knows I report back to you. He doesn't talk about anything important while I'm around. Bala paused to take a drink of his kava. That just means I have to do some digging and spying. Arden's working on something big. He's pissed about not getting the seat on the council and doesn't hide his need to seek revenge. He only trusts his beta, Ren. The two have been sneaking out of the pack together suspiciously. More than usual, that is. Keon pointed at Bala with his fork. You could play on the rogue thing. Let Arden think the treatments aren't working. You'd have to make him believe it, though. Davin shook his head. It's too risky. Submitting to the aggression of the illness could push you over the edge. Once you go over, there is no coming back. Stick with spying for now. Brazen pulled out his comm and typed some notes. I could make an implant that will sit under the skin at the base of your neck. It will monitor you for changes in your body, so if you get in trouble or your crazy uncle tries to kill you, we'll be alerted. You can also use the implant to send us messages via your comm. I prefer Brazen's suggestion. I'm not happy about going back to the darkness I was in for too long. Bala glanced out over the river. It's like I finally have some clarity and hope. Davin nodded. Done. Brazen sent Madden a message about the implant. Madden will let you know when it's ready. He turned the conversation to the security for the welcome event for the new surrogates. 
I have everything ready to install in the community center and the females' living quarters. But camera and motion detectors will only protect them to a point. What's the plan? Brazen might be the night flame geek, but he also doubled as an enforcer when needed. The welcome event and festival would need all hands on duty to be sure Arden and whoever else didn't crash the parties. Keon spoke first. We'll have an official meeting two days before the events. But it's simple. Everyone will wear earpieces to stay in touch. There will be enforcers from all three houses prowling the perimeter. North, Mace, and I agree that a dozen altogether should be good. Then two guards at the front doors and two at the back doors of the community center during the welcome event. The festival will be outside during the day. There will be eyes in the sky and on the ground. Davin added, The rest of the enforcers will be mingling among the guests to get a feel for those who might be a problem. I guess that is all we can do. Brazen saw Reagan and the females stand and come toward them. Moments later, Reagan hugged him from behind and kissed his cheek. You ready to go? Always for you. Brazen smelled her excitement after he spoke. He glanced at the males and asked, Are we done? Katrina went up to Davin and pulled him out of his chair. You can plan security until it looks damn near perfect on paper. However, it never goes as planned. Just have to keep our eyes open and make sure the blasters are set to kill. Brazen chuckled. Katrina worked for the human FBI before she came to Daria, and she could be as lethal as Davin. Davin glared at her and crossed his arms. You? He poked her on the nose. We'll mingle with the females. Katrina gave him a half frown. I'll still have a blaster. In fact, Gianna and Reagan will too. Keon stood and hooked Vanessa by her expanding waist and drew her close. Gianna will be wearing the queen's crown, so she won't need a blaster. The queen's crown, along with several other royal jewels, held the magic of the royal bloodline. Because Gianna had dragons somewhere in her family and DNA, she was able to use the magic in the crown to protect herself and those around her. Oh, yeah. Katrina said with a wide smile. Then she slapped Davin on the ass. Ready to go home? Davin picked her up and tossed her over his shoulder and waved as he stalked off toward the estates. I'm taking Hellcat home to give her a proper punishment. Reagan snorted out a laugh and leaned into Brazen. Bala stood and inched away from them, looking like he was uneasy with all the sensual play between the mated couples. Um, I'll talk to you all later. After Bala made his escape, they said goodbye and walked down the sidewalk. When Brazen and Reagan reached their house, they waved to Keon, Vanessa, and Gianna as they made their way to the main house. Instead of going inside, Brazen stared into Reagan's blue eyes. The dust of freckles over her nose and the tops of her cheeks were beautiful. Her fiery red hair was down, blowing in the breeze. Do you want to do something fun? A brilliant smile formed, radiating her beauty even more. I'm always up for having fun. Where are we going? Go-kart racing. He thought about it for a moment. If they are still there, but it doesn't hurt to check it out. You have go-karts? Nodding, he directed her to the garage where the transporter was parked. These are a little different than what Earth would have. You'll see. Chapter 17 Reagan stepped out of the transporter in awe. The area was overgrown with bushes and tall grass and trees that hadn't been pruned in years. Nature's canvas. It was amazing and full of color. Beyond the green, orange, purple, and yellow foliage was a dirt track. The fencing, though, was half torn down. Brazen walked to the front of the transporter and held out a hand to her. Let's see if we can get a couple of the carts going. Her insides burst with excitement. One of the few happy childhood memories she had was working on the old Chevy with her grandfather. Do you have tools here just in case? 
How long have they been sitting out here? Brazen and Rise showed her in so many small ways they cared. Taking her on dates like this, the simple act of a kiss on the head as they pass by, a smile when she walked in the room, all these things showed her their love and she'd never felt safer. Brazen chuckled. <laughs> I don't think anyone has been out here in years, so they may not be fixable. When they reached the track, Reagan heard the sound of metal tapping metal. Brazen glanced at her and frowned as he drew her closer to him. Sounds like someone had the same idea as us. Brazen bunched his brows. Seems so. They walked through the entrance and saw two men working on carts. They lifted their heads and straightened. Brazen relaxed and continued in their direction. Reagan figured he knew them. When they reached them, Brazen made introductions. Reagan, this is Micah and his sentry North. Micah had black hair that fell to his shoulders, and when the light hit it just right, it appeared to have leopard spots slightly lighter. Or maybe they were a dark silver. His eyes were cat-like and the brightest green she'd ever seen. He held out his hand, and a playful smile lifted his lips. Nice to meet you. When she took his hand to shake it, he lifted it to his lips. Brazen took her hand from Micah's before the Alpha could kiss it. Micah likes to tease and start trouble. He's a cat. Reagan snorted out a laugh. Micah shrugged, and a ghost of a smile tugged at his lips. But she saw a painful longing in his green depths. Focusing on North, she held out her hand. He didn't take it. Nice to meet you. Despite how my alpha likes to tease, we actually have rules against leaving our scent on someone else's mate. Oh, yeah. Reagan remembered reading something about that in the classes she took on the ship, and then again while researching more about the wolves, cats, and dragons when she and the girls started planning the festival. Wolves and cats were a little more territorial than the dragons. That extended to their mates to the point of possessive behavior. North was the opposite to Micah. His hair was a platinum blonde with silver spots that faded into the strands, but stood out more than Micah's. North's eyes were also that of a cat's, but a pale blue. Reagan motioned to the carts that weren't exactly what she'd call go-carts. They were like miniature hovercrafts with roll cages. Are they operational? North nodded. We got the other two over there running this morning. I just need to make a few more adjustments and these will be ready. Micah bent over the craft and worked. You two come to race? Reagan glanced to Brazen, then said, Yeah, you against us or the fastest wins? We go four laps and the first one over the finish line wins. North picked up a helmet and handed it to her. There was a challenge in his eyes. She took the helmet and put it on. You're on. Moments later, she sat in her hover cart with the seatbelt secure around her and helmet on. Brazen ran through the basics on what controls did what and how to accelerate and stop since there were no foot pedals like a car. Everything was controlled by hand. Take it for a test drive before the race starts. Brazen stepped back and she took off. At first, she was a little shaky, and it took her about a half of a lap before she got the hang of steering. She blew by the guys to do a second lap just to make sure she got the handle on it. Her heart raced with the thrill of the wind blowing past her. The vibration of the engine made her feel alive and carefree. She skidded to a stop and laughed like a crazy person. That was awesome! The guys shook their heads and climbed into their carts. Together, the four of them moved to the starting line. She was about to ask who would do the countdown when Brazen pulled out his comm and typed something on it. Within moments, a hologram appeared in front of them of a light tree. The tree counted down, and when the green light lit up, they took off. Micah's cart shot ahead of the others. Reagan accelerated, catching up to him. They were neck and neck for the first lap, then Brazen raced ahead of them. North picked up speed, but Brazen wouldn't let him pass. 
After a few failed attempts, North bumped Brazen's cart, sending him spinning off the track. Reagan glanced back to make sure he didn't crash before she chased North. She tried to go around North to take the lead again, but he blocked her attempts. When they reached the curve, she drove over the grass in the middle, bypassing the curve altogether. She got back on the track in front of North and picked up speed. She heard him yell, cheater, as she crossed the finish line. Stopping her cart and turning it off, she pulled her helmet off. Her sides hurt from her laughter as the guys stopped around her. No one said there were rules. Micah chuckled. That is true. North glared at her, but she could tell he was amused. Next time, I'll be sure to set some rules for the cheaters. He winked at her, making her laugh harder. Brazen came over and kissed her, then stared at her. She averted her gaze to the other two, noting they were putting their carts up, not paying attention to them. Giving her attention back to Brazen, she asked, What? I love seeing you happy. She kissed him. Thank you for this. No, thank you for being my mate. He straightened and held out his hand. Let's go home. Rise will be home from work soon. A whole new excitement filled her. Do we have time to have dinner waiting for him? Yes, but we need to hurry. She got out of the cart and waited for Brazen to put them up. Hope and another emotion she swore she'd never feel again filled her heart. Love. She was falling, and it scared the shit out of her. Chapter 18 Arden cursed and threw the keyboard across his office. It bounced off the wall next to the door and hit the ground. Damn dragons. They would pay for casting him out and denying him what he wanted. Well, if he couldn't be on the inside, he had other ways to tear them down. Wintervale and Silvermoon would fall right along with them. He thought breaching the security of the neutral zone was the answer. However, he was starting to second-guess that plan. He'd been trying for weeks to get the security codes that would give him access to the neutral zone and the surrogates that would be staying in the newly built complex. He'd expected Brazen to alarm the buildings, but not the whole damn area. Why did they call it a fucking neutral zone if they put it in a bubble? It was a big fuck you to Arden, and he was going to deliver everything they deserved. The software was unbreakable, it seemed. Rin, who was one of the top hackers in the galaxy, couldn't break it. At least not as quickly as Arden would like. Speaking of his beta, Rin entered the office and lifted a brow after noticing the keyboard on the floor. Taking your frustrations out on the keyboard will not help you break the system. There are layers of processes in place that stop everything I do. Plus, Brazen added dragon magic to strengthen it. But you can break it. Arden dropped into his chair and rocked back, watching his beta and sentry place the keyboard on the desk. I can. However, it will take some time because I have to tear down each layer completely. I'm getting close. Ren sat on the couch and picked up his tablet to go back to work on the system. Close isn't good enough. Arden slammed his hand on his desk. There has to be someone besides that dragon who knows the codes. Ren typed on his wireless keyboard and said, His mate has been working with him on the project. Send someone to get her. If she won't tell us, then we use her to get Brazen to tell us. Or take the female and pull the codes from her mind. Ren stopped typing. My power would be too strong for her mind. Arden frowned at Rin. The tiger shifter had the ability to go deep into the mind and pull out information. He could also alter memories and break someone's mind. Since when did you care about a human female? Just letting you know, it could backfire on you and in the process could kill her before you get the codes. Rin glanced at Arden over his shoulder. Are you ready for the dragons to come at you full force if you kill one of their mates? 
Yeah, Arden knew the risk of having Ren use his mind-jumping abilities to get what he wanted. He also knew her mates would track her down as soon as his strongest enforcers grabbed her. That was why he had a second plan in place as a distraction. Is everything in place for Night City? Ren nodded. Everything is set and can be controlled from your calm. Punching in the number for his enforcers, Arden barked out his orders. I want you to bring the redhead female to me. Make sure she's alive. He cut off the call without waiting for an answer. His enforcers wouldn't dare disobey him. Reagan has information Arden wanted, and he was going to do whatever it took to get it. Chapter 19 Reagan tied the laces of her tennis shoes and headed to the front door. As she passed Brazen's office, he rolled his chair to the door and stuck his head out. Are you going for a run? She smiled at the frown that marred his face. He worried when she went out alone, and it let her know how much he cared. Yeah, it's so nice out today. It had been raining for the last few days, and she was dying to get out while the suns were shining. Do you have your calm? She smiled and patted the pocket in her leggings on the side of her thigh. Yes, and it's on. Plus, Rise is supposed to catch up with me in a few, after he's done in the neutral zone. Rise was part of the construction team that built the hospital and other buildings. They'd just started on a strip mall that would have shops and restaurants. She couldn't wait to meet the women who would arrive soon. There were six, and Reagan felt like she already knew them from their files. Waving at Brazen, she opened the front door and sighed as the light from two suns warmed her skin. The air had started to cool, indicating that the summer months were coming to an end. She fell into a steady run along the sidewalk at the edge of the river. The sounds of birds and the water filled the air. The floral scents from gardens on the grounds were always welcoming and calming. She loved her evening runs. The suns would be setting in about an hour, bringing the cool evening air. Her short runs helped her to clear her mind, and it gave her some alone time. At least for a little while, until Rise joined her. Sometimes Brazen joined her after a bit. But she enjoyed times when she was alone. It wasn't that she didn't like the guy's company. She loved it. That was the problem. She was starting to fall in love with them, and it scared her a little. The honeymoon period was sure to end soon, and things would change like they did with her marriage. She tried to tell herself that she was being silly. The guys were her true mates and could never hurt her. It was still hard to not think about the worst. Running helped. She reached her two-mile mark and hadn't heard from Rise. Checking her calm, she frowned. He left a message that there was a mix-up with the countertops and was staying to help install the correct ones. Well, time to head back to the house anyway. She turned and headed back. When she rounded a curve, two large shifters stepped into her path. She didn't recognize either of them. She slowed to a walk and narrowed her gaze. They held the same deadly aura that Rin did, telling her they weren't there to make friends. Instantly, she pulled out her calm, but before she dialed Brazen's number, one of the asshats snatched it from her. He moved faster than she'd seen her guys move. Shit. The other shifter grabbed her arm and dragged her toward a transporter. She glanced back at the other one to see him throw her calm on the sidewalk, smashing it against the concrete. Her heart sank and fear burned her insides. She had no way to call her guys. She jerked her arm, but the man's grip was too tight. Thinking back on her sparring sessions with Rise, she took deep, even breaths and focused. She also scanned her surroundings and noted her captor's body language. His shoulders were straight, but he had a slight limp in his left leg. A weakness. Twisting at the waist, she hit him in the nose with the heel of her palm and then kicked out, hitting the knee of his weak leg. He screamed and grabbed his nose and had to let her go to keep from falling. 
She didn't wait around to see what the fucker would do. She ran as fast as she could from her assailants. The other man caught up with her, too fast for her. He tackled her and tied her hands with a thick rope. When he went to her feet, she kicked. She wasn't going to make it easy for them. She managed to kick him in the face. It distracted him long enough for her to scramble to her feet and run. Bitch! The word was yelled with a growl in his tone. She needed a way to contact her mates. Why did I have to be a coward when it came to completing the mating bond? The first shifter caught up to her and tripped her. She cried out as she landed on her side so she wouldn't land on her face. Kicking, she tried to get out from under him. He laid on her thighs to keep from being kicked in the face like his friend. Asshat number two tied her feet with the same rope he did her hands. The feet swallowed her up. She prayed to whatever god was listening that her mates found her before she died. Or worse, she needed to tell them she loved them, too. Chapter 20 Something is wrong. Rise stormed into his house, scenting the air as he rushed to the stairs. Climbing halfway up them, he realized Reagan wasn't there. Fuck. He glanced to the comm in his hand and punched the button to call hers. It went straight to voicemail, indicating her calm was off. A bone-deep feeling that something was wrong made his dragon pace inside him. Why is her calm off? If they were bound together, he'd be able to mind-link with her. But they weren't. Cutting through the living room, he marched into Brazen's office. Have you seen Reagan? Brazen frowned and glanced at the time on his computer. No, but she's not due back from her run. He stopped himself from finishing that sentence, and his features turned deadly serious. Rise guessed Brazen was picking up the same uneasiness he was. Brazen pulled up the tracking app and searched for Reagan's calm. No signal. Shit. Brazen breathed out and tried again. Same result. That meant it was turned off or broken. She never turns off her calm. Brazen jumped up from his chair, knocking the thing over in the process. We'll have to track her by scent. Brazen hurried out of the office and was outside before Rise could turn around. Yeah, Brazen may be the quiet one, but he could be just as deadly as the rest of them. Together, they raced down the sidewalk in the direction she always took on her runs. Fuck. He fisted his hands and let out a growl. This is my fault. Brazen glanced at him. It's not your fault. The females should be able to venture out by themselves. It pisses me off that they can't. Yeah, it raked against Rise's last nerve as well. Their mate wasn't a prisoner, and she deserved a safe place to do what she wanted. Not worrying about rogues. Arden is responsible. I feel it. I agree, but we can't go off half-cocked without proof. Brazen slowed and scanned the area. She'd definitely been here a few minutes ago. Where is she? She can't just vanish. The panic in Brazen's voice made Rise reach for him. Instantly, Braze grabbed his hand and squeezed briefly. Their relationship was non-sexual, but they were as close as a bonded pair. Since the first day Rise came to the estates, he detached himself to Brazen. The other male welcomed him and offered friendship and the love of a brother. Brazen rounded on him and cupped his face in his hands. It was his way to get Rise to focus. They stared at each other for moments before Brazen said, We'll get her back. Rise nodded and stepped out of Brazen's hold, then continued down the walkway. About two miles from their house, Rise spotted something shiny in the grass. He jogged over and picked it up. Reagan's calm, or what was left of it. We know why she can't answer her calm. Rage swirled inside him like a wildfire waiting to consume everything in its path. The heavy scents of wolf and tiger were in the area as well as Reagan's. Drops of blood were on the sidewalk and in the grass. That better not be our mate's blood. 
Brazen cursed and began to shake. Not much pissed Brazen off, except having his mate kidnapped. Rise was right there with him. Whoever took her was going to pay. He dialed Bala's number just as Brazen's calm chimed. Bala answered on the first ring, and Rise didn't give him a chance to say hello. Reagan was taken. Have you heard anything or seen her? No, I'm not at Blood Moon right now. Fuck, it has to be Arden, but why? Bala fell silent, but Rise could hear the sound of road noise like Bala was driving. I'm turning around and heading to the den. There's only one place that bastard would take her. I'll find her and get her out. Braze and I will meet you at Blood Moon. Rise hung up and glanced at his best friend, who looked white as a ghost. Dread fueled the fire inside. Brazen shook his head and held up his calm. A fire alarm at the corporate building in Night City. Damn it. Rise threaded his fingers through his hair and paced while Brazen called the reception desk on the first floor of the building. What's going on? Just then, Rise's calm beeped with a message from Keon. Someone bombed the corporate building. Arden leaned against a tree and watched in satisfaction as the Night City corporate building burned. The explosives weren't enough to take down the whole building, but they did put a good size hole in the north side. Then again, taking down the office complex wasn't the point. The point was to cause a distraction to slow the dragons from searching for Reagan. She had information he wanted and needed to carry out his plan to bring down not just the dragons, but the alphas and their efforts for a false peace. He'd start with destroying the surrogate program. He needed the security codes for him to gain access to the female's living quarters. His calm beeped, and he glanced at the message. Two words he'd been waiting for. Got her. He knew his enforcers wouldn't fail him. With an evil smirk, he replied to the message. Put her in the tower. Chapter 21 Reagan paced the small room her two kidnappers dumped her in. Her wrists and ankles hurt from where they tied her up. Trying to escape her bonds didn't help. She stopped in the middle of the room and studied the few things in there. A child-sized cot was pushed against the back wall, and a small round table had a lamp on it. That was it. The carpet was in desperate need of a cleaning. She didn't want to know what the dark stains were. She turned her focus on the single window. If she looked at the floor much more, she was going to be sick. Well, you are on your own, Ray. Her dragons probably didn't know she was gone yet. That thought made her heart ache. There had to be a way out of there, yet she didn't know where there was. She took a few steps to the window and froze when the door handle jiggled and the lock clicked. Spinning around, she braced herself for an attack. She may not be as strong as a shifter, but she wasn't weak and she knew how to bring a male to his knees. If he had balls, he had a weakness. The door opened to the man she saw at the range. Rin. She pursed her lips and glared at him. I knew you were the kidnapping creeper type. Rin's expression didn't change as he advanced toward her. She shook her head and held up a hand. That's close enough. To her surprise, he stopped. Then the two large idiots who took her entered the room and stood against the wall, one on each side of the door. Reagan cast them a hard glare. She wished she had something to throw at them. Or a blaster. No harm will come to you as long as you give me the codes to the neutral zone security system. Ren's tone was matter of fact and a little bored. It was like he didn't like negotiating with a human. Well, that was too fucking bad. I'd rather die before giving you or anyone the codes. Why do you want them? To break in and do what? Not happening. Tell Arden to fuck off. She crossed her arms over her chest. She'd been on the edge of death a few times in her lifetime. 
so dying didn't scare her. Rin laughed. The sound was raspy and filled with evil. You can freely give me the information, or I'll pull it out of your mind. Shit, did that mean he was a telepath? Could he read her mind in that moment? What do you mean? Rin's dark eyes bored into her, and a sense of deadly fury filled the air around her. My ability goes beyond what telepaths can do. I can enter the mind and strip it while extracting the information I seek. Most of my victims don't come out of it sane. And it's painful, like being torn apart from the inside out. Her heart rate increased to an alarming rate. She tried like hell to contain her horror, but she knew she failed miserably because Rin chuckled. He stepped forward, pushing her toward the cot. Have a seat, lady. This might take a little while. He stopped when his comm unit beeped. He tapped his ear. What? His face turned red. Well, stop him. He ran out of the room shouting to the guards to not let anyone in. Fuck that shit. She was out. Desperate to get out, she rushed to the window and glanced through the bars. Oh, great. She was on the third floor maybe higher. There was no way to tell, really. From what she could see, there were no other buildings around. Where the hell am I? She wrapped her fingers around the bars and tucked, checking to see how secure they were into the stone of the building. They were pretty secure. Think, Ray? She crossed the room and placed an ear to the door. To cover all her options, she tested the doorknob. Locked. She knew that, but it never hurt to try. Then she knocked on it. A moment later, it opened, and idiot number one towered over her. What? She frowned and muttered, just checking. Then she slammed the door shut. A low growl filtered through the wood, and she shot him the bird. Jackass. She paced the room, running ideas of escaping over in her mind. She could play sick. That wouldn't work. They were shifters who could smell a lie, and they probably wouldn't care if she was and dig in her head anyway. After several minutes, she heard a noise outside the door. Something fell or was thrown on the floor, rattling the door. Then something crashed into the door, making her jump. She was surprised whatever it was didn't break through the wood. Not waiting around, she went to the table next to the cot and grabbed the lamp. The hallway fell silent, and she gripped the lamp tighter and held it over her shoulder, ready for the bastard to come in. The door opened and she threw the lamp. Once it left her hand, she realized her mistake. Bala's eyes grew large and he ducked out of the way just in time. Damn, female! I'm sorry, I thought you were that crazy-ass Ren coming back. He said he was going to rip my mind open. Can he do that? She crossed the room. Yeah, he can. That's why we need to get out of here before he returns. Bala took her hand and pulled her out of the room. The two guards laid in a heap on the floor, and she had to step over them. She followed closely behind Bala as they made their way down the spiral staircase to the ground floor. They made it halfway to the door before it swung open and guards rushed inside. Bala shifted one hand into a claw and charged the guards. Reagan searched for a weapon of some kind. She spotted a sword hanging on the wall and she ran to it. One of the guards went after her, hitting her in the side. They slid across the floor and she hit the wall. Pain exploded up her spine and in her head. Damn it. She punched the fucker and screamed for Bala. The guard covered her mouth. Wrong thing to do, asshole. She bit down hard enough she broke the skin. He jerked his hand away and drew his arm back like he was going to hit her. Been there, done that. She jerked her knee up, connecting with his balls. He roared and fell to the side. Reagan scrambled out of his reach and ran to the sword, this time she reached it. 
Pulling it off the wall, she twisted and swung, slicing another guard in the chest. He stumbled back, stunned that she was so quick. Not as slow as you thought, hun. You live a life fighting those who are supposed to love you, and you learn to be faster than your attacker. She swung again, this time connecting with his neck. He retreated, holding a hand to his throat. When she glanced up, she noted more guards coming toward the building. Bala, more are coming. Fuck, we can't win this. There's too many. Bala sliced his claw across the male's throat he was fighting and then turned to Reagan. Move back, I have to shift. She backed up while watching the door. You better hurry. Bala's body started to vibrate, and in a flash, he shifted to a large caramel and copper-colored dragon. He turned to her and wrapped a claw around her and whipped his tail into the back wall, putting a hole large enough he could break through it. He took off into the air, and Reagan squeaked as they went airborne. She peeked through his claws and watched as he blew a stream of fire onto the transporters and what was left of the tower building they were in. Fatigue started settling in her bones, and she curled into a ball in Bala's large claw. Thank you for saving me. She wasn't sure he heard her, and she was too tired to care at the moment. When she opened her eyes again, Bala was touching down on the ground. Familiar voices filled her ears, and she almost cried. Rise and brazen. Bala opened his claw, and she was instantly surrounded by arms and was pulled against a hard chest. Rise carried her toward a transporter. He climbed in the back seat, not letting go of her. A moment later, Brazen stuck his head inside. Let me see her. She met his gray eyes and smiled at him. His features went from fearful to grateful in seconds. Reagan leaned forward and kissed him softly. Take me home. Brazen nodded and shut the door before getting into the driver's seat. Reagan snuggled against Ryza's chest and clung to his shirt and passed out. Chapter 22 Ryze laid on his side watching Reagan sleep. She was exhausted. He sensed it. He also sensed her pain, even though she said she was fine. But as soon as her head hit the pillow, she was out. Bala had followed them to their house to check on how she was. Rise owed the mail for saving his mate. However, it'd have to wait. Right then, Rise didn't want to leave her side. Brazen crawled onto the bed at Reagan's back and brushed her hair from her face. We'll have to complete the bond soon. I'm not letting her out of my sight until I can feel her inside me. Rise nodded. He agreed and felt the same way. Yet they couldn't rush things with her. We have to let her make that choice. I uh, know. Their comms went off at the same time, and they groaned. He didn't need to look at the message to know it was a call for a meeting. Voss loved to call his damned meetings. Brazen checked his calm and sighed. Meeting, and Voss wants Reagan there. Fuck. I hate to wake her up, Rise said. I'm not asleep. Reagan opened her eyes and gave him a weak smile. Just resting. She sat up and stretched. Damn, I'm sore all over. Brazen stood and typed on his calm. I'll have the kitchen prepare you some healing tea. It'll help you feel better. He stopped at the door and waited for them. Reagan, are you sure they didn't hurt you? She squeezed Ryza's hand as they stopped next to Brazen. She cupped Brazen's face. I'm sure. I'll explain at the meeting. I don't want to have to repeat myself. Fair enough. Brazen exited the room, and the three of them walked to the main house. Voss had the great room of the house transformed into a large conference room, but more comfortable than the one in the corporate building, which needed rebuilding after the bombing. Rice still hadn't heard the details on that. Neither had Brazen, since he had chosen to go with Rise to get their mate. A rectangular table was set up on one side with a computer. 
The white screen that wirelessly connected to the computer was hung over the fireplace. A semicircle of furniture was placed around the table and screen. The two sofas were moved and some chairs from other rooms were brought in. Reagan moved to sit with the females on the sofa. Gianna drew her into a hug. Are you all right? Yes, thanks to Bala. Reagan pulled back and glanced at Voss. The Dragon King sat at the table, waiting for everyone to get settled. Brazen sat next to him and set up the computer for video conference. Rise figured the wolf and leopard alphas would be joining them. Once the alphas were on screen, Voss started the meeting. I spoke to Bala already. He is staying in Night City from now on. His cover is officially blown and can't go back to Blood Moon without risking Arden killing him for treason. Voss motioned to Reagan. Please tell us what happened. Reagan took a deep breath and sat back against the couch. Arden had two of his bastard minions kidnap me. They either knew when I take my evening runs or they were waiting nearby for me to be alone. Anyway, they took me to a tower in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure where it was. Bala would know. Rin was there and said he wanted me to give him the security codes to the neutral zone system. I told him to fuck off, and he said he could just pull it out of my mind, and it wouldn't be pleasant. A frown formed on Reagan's face, and Rise sat on the floor at her feet. We need to take out the Arden issue before the surrogates arrive. I agree, Voss said with a growl. Keon spoke up about the explosion. Arden overstepped so many lines when he blew a hole in the office complex. From the screen, Jericho and Micah both nodded. Micah said, Arden will be dealt with. He doesn't know just how powerful we are together. If he did, then he has a death wish. What would he gain from getting the security codes? Katrina asked. Davin answered, To enter the neutral zone as he pleases. My hunch is he plans to harm the surrogates, or worse. We need a plan to go after him, Rise said. Voss smirked. We'll form one and execute it as soon as possible. Reagan was glad when the meeting ended, and she and the other women moved to their own private party in the upstairs library. She didn't want to talk about Arden or Rin or how her day went anymore. Going over the final plans for the festival was the perfect distraction. They had the table set up as stations. One had the supplies for creating the flyers that would be posted, and another had the computer set up to email copies to the alphas so they could send out to their packs. And the other two were used for various crafts for decorations. Reagan glanced at her friends. Gianna and Vanessa glowed with mom-to-be happiness. Katrina, too, was happier than when they first arrived months ago. Reagan wondered if it had anything to do with being mated. Hesitantly, she asked, In your classes or research, have you run across cases of a mate abusing another? The girls shook their heads at once. No way, Katrina said. Gianna and Vanessa agreed. Gianna added, The bond is strong, and hurting your mate will also hurt you. The abuser would have to really be into self-harm and pain, like a complete psycho like Cedric. Vanessa reached over and covered Reagan's hand. Why do you ask? Reagan stared at the flyer on the table in front of her and told her story. My dad left us when I was young. I think I was five or six. Mom didn't deal well with it and started drinking. That led to drugs and strange men coming and going. I just seemed to be in her way. The abuse started not long after. When I graduated from high school, I married my boyfriend and was glad to finally be away from mom and that house. Swallowing a sob, she paused. She had told police and her therapist this story so many times, but telling it to the women she considered her friends was much harder. My husband turned out to be worse than my mom. I was to be one of those seen, not heard types of wife, since when have I ever been silent? Reagan let out a soft laugh and continued. Anyway, 
the abuse didn't start until I told him I was pregnant. Shortened version, I lost the baby and killed my husband. When she stopped speaking, the girls were quiet. Then Katrina asked, Did you do time? Reagan shook her head. They ruled it an accident. Greg fell on the kitchen knife. She used air quotes around the word fell. Katrina smirked. Good. Vanessa asked, why did you sign up for the surrogate program? Reagan shrugged. The officer who responded to Greg's accident was a shifter and mentioned the program to me. I hoped being part of the program would help me overcome my insecurities while helping the shifters rebuild. Plus, I always wanted babies. A dozen adorable little redheads running around. Gianna sat back in her chair and rubbed her large belly. You will definitely be having babies. Katrina laughed. Sooner or later. In all seriousness, you never have to fear your mates. Davin is a huge teddy bear when we're alone. He's a growly bear dragon in public. Reagan laughed, feeling the tension and worry melt away. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for being open with us and sharing your story. Gianna patted her hand. We are here for you if you ever need to talk. A sense of renewed purpose rose inside her. She was there to start a new life, and she got so much more. Two mates and a family. Chapter 23 Brazen stood outside the library listening to Reagan tell her story to the other females. He knew she was abused, read her files, but hearing her tell it made him want to kill someone. He glanced at Rise and they locked gazes. Yeah, his best friend was having just as much of a hard time as Brazen was. Rise shook his head. She told me some of it, but not that she lost a child. No wonder she doesn't trust the mating. Brazen frowned and added, We'll wait for her to be ready, even if it takes a hundred years. What takes a hundred years? The guys straightened and met Reagan's amused stare. Rise blurted out, Bonding you to us. We decided to wait. Whenever you're ready. You just can't go running anymore without one of us. Brazen punched him in the arm. Ass, she can go, but I'm implanting her with a GPS. Gianna and the other females came up behind Reagan, laughing. Might as well go home and complete the mating. We have your back in the unlikely event they get stupid and start showing signs of going rogue. Katrina nodded, glaring at Brazen, then rise. Yeah, I'm betting there is a special holding cell for abusive mates. If not, we could make one. Davin and the others could take turns beating sense into them. Brazen took Reagan by the hand and moved her away from the females. They could be harsh when they banded together. You females scare me. Reagan laughed. Take me home and claim me as your mate. I'm ready. Plus, it seems they have a plan, just in case. No need to engage that plan. Ever. At least not on us. Rise directed Reagan to the stairs, and Brazen followed. He couldn't wait to get his mate home and form a bond with her. Would you really wait for a hundred years to claim me? Reagan sat on the bed and watched her mate strip down. Desire rushed through her veins, heating her insides. Rise locked gazes with her as he closed the distance between them and lowered his head. For you? Yes. Their desire to make sure she was comfortable cemented the knowledge they wouldn't hurt her. She could trust them completely. Butterfly swarmed her belly. His lips brushed against hers, and she pressed into him. A soft moan stuck in her throat. His kiss was as dominating and powerful as his presence, and she loved it. Threading her fingers in his hair, she lay back on the bed, pulling him with her. Rise broke the kiss and nipped his way down her jaw to her neck as Brazen stretched out on her other side and traced his fingers down her stomach to her hip. Tingles skittered over her flesh, and her pussy ached for one, or hell, both of them. 
Rise bit her throat, not breaking the skin, and she cried out as pleasure rippled through her, igniting a raging fire deep in her core. He lifted his head and locked gazes with her. His eyes were the lightest blue she'd ever seen. They glowed, and his pupils narrowed into slits like his dragon's eyes. She knew the beast was watching her from within. Rise's mouth morphed into a wicked, sensual smile. You're mine. Yes. The single word spilled out without missing a beat. There was no hesitation. Brazen brushed a strand of hair from her face. She's so ruddy, Rise. Wet and beautiful. The wildfire inside her grew hotter at Brazen's words. She gripped Brazen's cock and stroked in slow, circular movements. He growled out a curse and jerked his hips, thrusting into her hand. Rise moved down the bed, trailing kisses down her stomach until he settled between her thighs. He tucked his arms under her legs and kissed the inside of her thigh, then nipped his way to her entrance before he covered her with his mouth. A cry of pleasure burst from her lips, Brazen leaned down and teased her nipple with his tongue, then grazed the tight bud with his teeth. The sensation threatened to consume her, doubling the pleasure from Rise's amazing tongue. Rise suckled her clit, intensifying the pleasure washing over her. He slid two fingers inside her and pumped. Her moans turned to pants as pleasure overrode her senses. She rocked her hips, grinding her pussy against his face. Brazen claimed her mouth, thrusting his tongue past the seam of her lips. Their tongues twined together. She rode the wave of ecstasy while desire built inside her, waiting to explode. Come for us, Brazen nipped at her earlobe. She whimpered and couldn't contain her need to succumb to the raw passion. The orgasm ripped from her, making her cry out and grip the sheets. She shuddered as Rise licked her from entrance to clit. He rose onto his knees and teased her clit with his cock. With a quick movement, he entered her to the hilt. She gasped as sensations assaulted her. She wrapped her legs around him, drawing him closer, deeper. Light exploded behind her eyelids as she climaxed hard against him. Rise followed her over the edge. He roared out a groan as he spasmed, pushing inside with each jerk. Rise crushed his mouth to hers in a raw, demanding kiss. You are so beautiful. He pulled out and stood. She saw his cock was still hard. Motioning to Brazen to swap places, Rise said to her, on your hands and knees. A thrill shot through her, and she obeyed. Rise lay on the bed beside her and cupped her breast, pinching and rolling the nipple. Brazen moved to his knees behind her and pushed inside. Fuck, you feel so good. Her body trembled as he moved in and out of her pussy, each thrust in harder than the one before, he leaned forward so his chest pressed against her back. He braced himself with one hand on the bed while the other moved down her stomach to her clit. He rubbed her in circular motions, intensifying her pleasure. Rise gripped his cock and stroked it while he moved under her to take one breast in his mouth. A wild knot of desire formed in her core, growing, her panting turned into cries as Brazen slammed into her over and over. Pleasure tore through her as another climax erupted. Brazen's muscles tensed behind her moments before he tightened his arm around her waist, holding her to him as he orgasmed. He pulled out and lay on the bed, gathering her in his arms. Chapter 24 Reagan's bladder woke her, demanding to be emptied. Getting up, she glanced at the clock. The middle of the night. And she was wide awake. Figured. After taking care of business, she quickly made her way downstairs. On her way to the kitchen, she grabbed Brazen's tablet from his office. 
She wanted to change the codes for the security system because she didn't trust that Ren hadn't pulled them from her mind. Call her paranoid. She opened the freezer and pulled out a Daria-style ice cream she and the other women discovered a few nights ago. She spent another several minutes hunting down toppings for her bowl of ice cream before she settled at the kitchen table. Bowl of frozen sweetness on one side and the tablet on the other. She logged into the system, and her coat didn't work. Had Brazen changed them already? Why hadn't he told her? Deciding to ask the software genius when he got up, she stood and collected her bowl and the tablet to carry out to the sunroom. As soon as she exited the kitchen, the tablet slipped from her hand and landed face down on the floor. Shit, please don't be broken. Fear froze her insides, and her hands shook as she picked up the device. When she turned it over, a sick feeling churned in her belly. Memories of the time she broke Greg's phone by accident flooded her brain. That was the time he beat her so badly she miscarried. Reagan? Her heart stopped for several beats, and she hugged the tablet to her, hiding the shattered screen. Brazen stepped off the last stair and met her gaze before glancing at the bowl of ice cream and the tablet. She took a shaky breath as he frowned and crossed the living room to her. What's wrong? She straightened her spine and prepared herself for a fight while handing him the tablet. Holding her gaze, he took it, then looked down. Releasing a sigh, he moved closer to her and she backed up. Ray? I'm not going to hurt you. I can smell your fear. When she didn't speak, he walked to his office and tossed the tablet in the trash can he used for broken and discarded devices and electronics. He turned to her, watching her for several moments. Come here. That was it. In the next moments, she would find out if the honeymoon period was over. Gathering her nerves and stealing herself for what was to come, she went to him. When she was inches from him, he pulled her closer, wrapped his arms around her, and kissed her. Shocked, she studied him. His gray depths only held concern and not anger like she expected. You're not mad? Frowning, he shook his head. Over a tablet? No, even if you broke some priceless, irreplaceable artifact, I wouldn't be angry with you. I'd be upset and maybe disappointed, but shit happens. Things break. We move on. Emotions flooded her, and she tried to swallow the tears. She'd lived all her life walking on eggshells and being sure she was careful not to break things or make a mess or whatever pissed her mother off, and then Greg after they were married. Reagan didn't know how to live in a normal relationship. Well, normal for a triad. Brazen cupped her chin and lifted so she met his gaze. He drew his brows together and swiped the tear from her cheek. Don't cry. I can handle anything except to see you cry or hurt. She took a shaky breath. I, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to react to your reaction. I know it's just a tablet. You have more and could fix it, but... He placed a finger over her lips. No buts. I'm not your dead husband, nor am I your mother. Why are you here, Ray? She jerked her gaze to his. Only her very few close friends called her Ray. For Brazen to do it without her prompting set off another group of emotions. When Brazen reached for her again, his frown growing deeper, she realized he was feeling what she was because of the bond. What is it now? Drifting forward, she wrapped her arms around his waist and hugged him, pressing her cheek to his chest. I'll be fine. He kissed the top of her head, then lifted her with one arm under her knees and the other supporting her back. He carried her to the couch and set her down, then leaned in so they were nose to nose. There is nothing you could ever do to make me raise a hand to you. You know that. Just search inside you for the link that connects you to me and Rise. Trust that feeling, that bond. Sitting beside her, he turned the TV on, 
although they called it something else she couldn't remember. It was still a television to her. What do you feel like watching? Chapter 25 Reagan shrugged and snuggled into him. Something with suspense and a kick-ass plot. He found a spy movie, then settled back to watch it and wound his arm around her waist, so his hand rested on her hip. She had just drifted off to sleep when she heard Riza's voice. Why are you two up so early? Reagan arched a brow and held her hand up in the air for him. Instantly, he prowled to her and sat at her hip, picking up her feet and placing them on his lap. The feeling of being complete with her two mates touching her sent a calming sensation through her. Brazen turned off the movie. I wanted to wait until morning, but since we're all awake, I can't wait anymore. My secret project is done. Well, done as it will be for now. Reagan shot to her feet and bounced. You mean the locked door? Brazen nodded, and she raced up the stairs and waited for the guys to carry their slow asses up there. Rise was the first one to reach her. Through their bond, she felt his eagerness to see what Brazen had been keeping from them. Stop teasing, Brazen, Reagan yelled. He appeared at the top of the stairs and smirked at her. Then he slowly made his way to them. Uncertainty and nervousness flowed through their bond, making Reagan frown. Why are you nervous? I'm not sure you will like it. She glanced at Rise, who shrugged. Then she met Brazen's stare again. It's for me? All of us, really. Excitement rolled inside her. Could it be a new master suite for the three of them? A private oasis to escape to? There was no telling what Brazen had built. Brazen pulled out his comb and held it up so the screen faced her. Press each of your fingers to the screen one at a time. Even though it was an odd request, she did as he said. When she was done, he motioned to the door. Open it. She frowned, so he explained. The door handle will read your fingerprints and unlock. What in the hell was in that room that needed fingerprint security? She grabbed the handle and twisted. The door pushed open, and when she entered the room, the lights turned on. A flood of emotions overwhelmed her, and she began to shake. Tears rolled down her cheeks, and her heart bloomed with happiness. The room wasn't a master suite nor was it an oasis. It was far better. A nursery. The walls were soft beige with puffy clouds that were barely visible. Pale green and yellow curtains hung over the window that matched the sheets and blanket on the crib to her right. The crib itself was dark wood with dragons carved into it. The feet of the bed were dragon claws. Glancing at the other side of the room, she saw a rocking chair with the same carvings. Next to it was a smaller, portable bed. Reagan sniffed and hugged her waist. This is too much. Brazen stepped in front of her and frowned. You don't like it. What? She studied him and wiped her eyes. Then she jumped into his arms and hugged him tightly. I wanted it to be perfect. If there is anything you want to change, tell me. Brazen hugged her. I knew our surrogate would be here soon, so I started while we waited. I'm glad we found you. She framed his face in her hands. It's perfect. Glancing at Rise, she lowered herself to her feet. Rise? He looked at her, then to Brazen. This is real. Rise laughed and picked Reagan up, spinning her around. You know what this means? She laughed. What? We'll have little redheads running around. Brazen chuckled. As many as you want. The idea of having kids thrilled her, and she didn't have to worry about the guys not wanting them. Because they did. Her heart filled with love. Then it hit her. She was in love. Like real, soul-deep love. Chapter 26 Bala pulled his transporter up to his house in the abandoned wolf village. 
the place he lost his family at the hand of his own father. Bala had spent too many years blaming the wrong male. He was thankful Davin and Voss gave him a second chance to make up for what he had done in order to seek revenge. Inside, Bala didn't turn to the sound of heavy footsteps coming up behind him. He was expecting Davin. Why are we meeting here? Davin stopped. Bala glanced at him over his shoulder. Because Arden won't come here. Make yourself comfortable. I'm waiting on Quill. Who's Quill? Davin asked with suspicion in his tone. Bala wasn't bothered by the mistrust. After all, it was his own fault. Quill is a trusted friend in the Blood Moon Pack. He is well respected and the leader of a group that is planning an uprising against Arden. You thought to introduce us? Bala faced Davin and studied him. The male still held that deadly energy around him, but he'd changed. His anger no longer ruled his actions. Bala knew it was because of Davin's mate. Bala hoped to be given that same chance, but he wasn't going to hold his breath for that miracle. I think Quill would help you spy on Arden since my cover is blown. You did what you had to do. Thank you. Davin didn't show any emotions in the features, but his eyes sparkled with his dragon, and the scent of pride rolled off him. Reagan's mates are indebted to you. Waving off Davin's words, Bala exited the front door. Quill stopped his transporter in what used to be a driveway. Then the male stepped out and scented the air before locking gazes on him. We're meeting a dragon? Bala pursed his lips. Don't be an ass. I am half dragon. Quill held his hands up. Just took me by surprise. He advanced toward Bala and the house. Davin stepped out beside Bala and nodded. Nice to see you again, Quill. With his mouth open, Bala stared at Davin. You two know each other? Davin shrugged. We've run into each other here and there. Quill laughed. Past information to the Dragon King just wasn't fast enough to stop his death. No one could have stopped it. Voss and Madden don't blame you. Davin relaxed his stance. What are you doing in Blood Moon? A small smile formed on Quill's face. Once a spy? Jericho sent me in before Arden became the new rogue alpha. Bala shook his head. He'd been fighting for the wrong team for too long. He didn't see it until he started the treatments with Madden. After the first couple injections, his mind was clearer, his thoughts more fluid. It was becoming easier to process emotions and impulses. Well, now we all know each other. Bala rolled his eyes. Quill, do you know what Arden is planning? The bastard is pissed that Reagan got away, so I'd watch your back. Quill motioned to the village around them. This isn't a safe place for you, but I do know Arden is focused on destroying not only Nightflame, but everything. The surrogates, Jericho, Micah, and whoever else holds a position that would stop Arden from ruling the planet. That bastard is insane. It goes beyond bloodlust or any mental illness. Davin grunted. Tell us something we don't know. Arden is looking for a book of some kind. My guess is the spell book Cedric used to curse the females of our species. Quill glanced around, scanning the area for a threat. I thought the Grimoire was destroyed, Davin said. Quill frowned. That's what I thought, so I did some digging. Rumors say the book went missing before it could be destroyed. Arden apparently believes it's missing and wants to find it. Davin gave a short nod to Quill. I want to know if and when he finds it. You got it. Quill headed back to his transporter. Davin turned to Bala. There is an extra cottage on the estate's grounds. You are welcome to stay there. I'm sure Jericho will let you stay in Wintervale. If you don't want to ask, I can ask for you. Bala shrugged. Thanks for the offer. I'm not sure where I belong. Am I free to disappear? I was thinking of traveling around for a while. Davin watched him for several long moments before he nodded. What about your treatments? 
I mentioned it to Madden, and he said as long as I came in once every moon cycle, I should be good. Bala chuckled. He also added that he'd track me down if I missed an injection. Davin smiled, a full-blown, teeth-showing smile. Because it's working. You're not a prisoner, and you've proven your loyalty by bringing Reagan home. You are free to travel, but don't be a stranger. With that, Davin shifted into his dragon and pushed off the ground and flew away. Bala had things to do before he disappeared to find the meaning of life. Like pack up his old life and the memories of his family. Madden said he'd store everything for him, and whenever he came back and wanted to settle down, just ask for it. Turning, he entered his home and finished packing. After he delivered the box to Madden, Bala was gone. He didn't fit in their world and was better off alone. They found it, Rin announced as he burst into Arden's study, carrying a leather-bound book. Arden barely stopped himself from snatching the book from Rin's hands. When his beta set it on Arden's desk, magic pulsed around it. Arden tentatively opened the book. Power called to him, tempting him to read the pages of the book out loud. Arden wasn't stupid. He knew all too well what the magic contained in those pages could do. After all, it was the very book that drove Cedric out of his mind. It didn't take him long to locate the spell that poisoned the females. Arden didn't want to repeat history. The human females would have their purpose as soon as he wiped out the Council and the Alphas, and Arden was the new king of Daria. Flipping a few more pages, he stopped and studied the old language of the Graxicon, the magical race who settled on Daria decades before the dragons. The Graxicon people were reclusive. They didn't trust outsiders. But Cedric had somehow gained the trust of the owner of the Grimoire. The page he stopped on had a spell to create a storm. He met Ren's stare. When is this festival? Two nights from now. Arden nodded and focused on the words in the spell. Two days to prep. He could have it completed by then. Closing the book, he sat back and smiled. We're going to crash a party, and the idiots won't know what hit them. Chapter 27 The night had finally come. Reagan was a nervous mess with all of the talks of security and Arden and then Bala taking off before she got to thank him. She frowned and scanned the inside of the community center. The tables were set up and decorated. The royal staff and volunteers from each house worked hard to get the final preps ready just before the surrogates arrived in an hour or so. Rise came up behind her and rubbed her bare arms and kissed her neck. Don't be so nervous. Everything is great. She sagged into him. I can't help but to think if there was a time for Arden to strike, it'd be tonight. And we'll be ready. The front doors opened and Katrina met her gaze. People are starting to show up. You need to come out with us to mingle. Then she disappeared. Reagan sighed, then kissed Brazen before going outside. The event even though the girls called it a festival, was more like a swap meet with music and food. It was the first, and Reagan and the other women didn't know if rides would be too much. They did incorporate games throughout the grounds, which was the center of the neutral zone. The purpose of the event was for people from all three houses to meet each other and hopefully start up business relationships as well as personal ones. This was a great idea. Micah's low tone startled her. She met his gaze and smiled. It was Gianna's idea. The rest of us helped put it all together. Katrina nodded. We are so thrilled that so many have shown up. North stepped up beside Micah. Micah told the pride it was in their best interest to come. We are expecting Arden to show, and those who wish to take him out will get the chance. Reagan glanced at Katrina who smirked and added, the council officially announced Arden as a rogue and no longer protected by the laws. 
When was that decision made? Reagan asked. Micah said, about an hour ago. That was good to know. Reagan wondered if news had gotten to the rogue Alpha yet. And if it had, would he go on the run? We're going to go mingle and check in with the enforcers. Micah took her hand and she narrowed her eyes at him. He was handsome and had a calming aura, but he didn't stir up her insides like her mates did. Micah smiled. Congrats on your mating. Thank you, she said, and he nodded to Katrina and walked off with North at his side. Rise came up behind her and kissed her temple. You females did good. Reagan twisted to face him and looped her arms around his neck. Katrina eased away with a wave. Now if only Arden doesn't crash the party, I'll consider it a success. He chuckled and kissed her nose. He was about to say something, then stopped. Reagan heard someone speaking into Rise's earpiece. She turned to face him. What's going on? He shook his head, grabbed her hand, and led her to the back of the community center, where they met Brazen and Davin. Both looked pissed. Rise asked, how long do we have? Davin shook his head. Not sure. The only information Quill has is that Arden has the grimoire and plans to attack the festival. Katrina rounded the corner and glared at her mate. We have to cancel the meet and greet with the surrogates, at least. The festival part is in full swing, but we can't bring the women here. Voss and Azar joined them, followed by Jericho, his sentry mace, and Micah and North. Voss pulled out his comm. I'm sending Nigel a message to hold the females at the spaceport or take them to the estate for the night. I'm not risking their safety. Jericho growled. My wolves know it is a possibility that Arden would show up. Micah added, My cats are aware and ready to do what it takes. My dragons, too. Voss slipped his calm into his pocket. Is that our backup or the first wave of Arden? Azar motioned to a group of males advancing toward them. Reagan's heart pounded and she looked at her mates, waiting for a signal. She noted Katrina palmed her blaster, ready to defend. Only when Davin moved to the large male with dark purple hair did everyone relax. They spoke too low for Reagan to hear before they joined the group. The other men behind the purple-haired guy stayed put. Voss held out his hand. Davin said you were still doing spy work. The man laughed and shook Voss's hand, then gave a short nod to Jericho and Micah. And now a rebel leader, it seems. He motioned to the group behind him. They are here to help fight Arden, and that's not all of them. About 60% of Blood Moon wants Arden dead. They didn't sign up to be in a pack like Wintervale used to be. No offense, Alpha. Jericho shrugged. None taken. I've only been Alpha for a year, so it is understandable for some to still have trust issues. Cedric did a head fuck on everyone. Reagan watched the men, then met Katrina's gaze. Her friend had told her that morning that she was pregnant. That meant Davin and Shade wouldn't let her fight in this battle. As if knowing what Reagan was thinking, Katrina rolled her eyes. Davin introduced the purple-haired man to everyone. This is Quill. He's the wolf spy. Reagan waved, but thought back to what Rin said when they were at the tower. He wanted the codes. Brazen later told Reagan that Rin was a hacker and one of the best in the galaxy. If they needed the codes to the new system, did that mean they could break into the estate and the mansion? If the surrogates are going to the estate, who will be there to guard them? The guys looked at her. Katrina frowned. Is the system at the estate as secure as the one here in the neutral zone? Azar shrugged. No, I mean, it's secure. Brazen added, it has the same layering defenses built in, but I didn't add the planet's magic because who's going to attack with royal enforcers there? But the enforcers are all here. Who will be with the surrogates? Reagan watched as realization rose in their features. Brazen turned to Reagan. Go back with Davin and Rise. Grab my computer from the office and connect it to Voss's in his study. 
link the main house to the NZ system. Then you stay inside the house. If you are attacked, call Drex. That's Keonstad. He and a group of others are on standby. Davin turned to Katrina. Get Gianna and Vanessa and come with us. As if hearing their names, the two women in question walked out the back door of the center. Katrina moved to stand between them and looped her arms with theirs. We're going home. I'll fill you in on the way there. Reagan pressed her lips together. Katrina wasn't arguing with Davin about not fighting. She must have anticipated a battle at home just as Reagan did. And they'll be ready. Chapter 28 Rise wasn't going to fall for the distraction at one location while Arden took out another. It was smart of Reagan to think of securing the estate while the females were there. On the other hand, the females were still going to be too vulnerable, so he messaged Drax and filled him in. The Night City head of security would get the Dragon Guards and send out messages to Wintervale and Silvermoon enforcers who were on standby to surround the estates. If there was something the cats and wolves were good at, it was being unseen. The dragons would protect the skies while the wolves and cats protected the grounds. They would be ready. Arden would be taken down. Rise didn't see it any other way. Drex is gathering the troops and will be there when we arrive. Rise put his calm away and scanned the road as Davin raced to get to the estate. Things were quiet. Too quiet. Suddenly, something crashed into the side of the transporter, spinning it around. Davin cursed and fought to keep it from flipping over, bringing them to a stop. Reagan glanced at Gianna and Vanessa in the third row back seat behind her. They looked scared, with white knuckled hands gripping whatever they could. Katrina unfastened her seatbelt and rose from the passenger seat. Davin pointed and yelled, Get back in that seat! Katrina motioned for him to move. I'll drive. You shoot the fuckers who are trying to run us off the road. After a growl, Davin traded spots with Katrina and checked the charge on his blaster. Rise did the same before opening the side window. She got the bus rolling again. Rise looked out, not seeing another vehicle. Shit, they're in their animal forms and chasing us. Ha! Katrina slammed on the brakes and did a 180. She revved the engine and slammed it into drive, taking off at a speed Rise didn't know the bus could do. Brace for impact! The wolves that were running toward them darted out of the way at the last minute, except for one. She hit it, then turned and raced after another one. Davin leaned out his window and fired. Rise did the same, just as three more rushed at them out of the woods. He yelled to Reagan, Open the floor and side panels for more weapons! Reagan opened the compartment in the floor and found explosives. Quickly, Rise showed her how to ignite them. Be sure to throw as soon as you strike the fuse. You only have seconds. She nodded and opened her window. Once in a position where she could strike and throw without falling out, she threw the first one. It exploded before it hit the ground. The impact of the blast pushed the bus faster and rattled the windows. Rise gathered up a few of his own little weapons. Leave it up to his mate to find bombs to fight rogues. He stuffed several in Reagan's pockets. Watch the other side. She nodded and left his side. Rise ignited and threw three of the bombs in rapid repetitions, each one landing near the wolves, hitting them. Rise! His mate hollered. There are too many. They're going to hit the bus again. Hanging halfway out, he peered back through his window to see his mate fall into her seat and lock her seatbelt just before the vehicle went airborne, flipping completely over, ejecting him the rest of the way out the window. The force of slamming into the first tree sent his head spinning. Shit, he needed to get back to the bus. The wolves would be all over it in seconds. He climbed to his feet, feeling blood soaking into his clothes and covering his face. He wasn't worried. He'd heal from all that. It was his head that wasn't clearing. 
Rise, where are you? What the fuck? Reagan, he panted between shallow breaths. Get back on the bus. His feet went out from under him and he fell. In seconds, she was there, hands around his face. You're hurt, she cried. Panic ripped through him. In the state he was in, he couldn't protect her from a snail, much less wolves. He pushed on her. Get back. He saw the first wolf that had come in search for them. No, she said. She pried his blaster from his hand, which he was surprised he still had a hold on, and turned. I hope this is a plug and play. She lifted her arms, and he'd be damned if she didn't hit the bastard head on. He'd take beginner's luck any day. She climbed to her feet, continuing to shoot at the more and more wolves coming at them. She didn't hit them all, but enough that they kept their distance for the moment. She leaned down, gun still pointed outward. Put your arm around my shoulder. We're going to the bus. Instead of arguing, he climbed to his feet with her help. His head was starting to slow its spin enough for him to realize the bus would be under attack too. Seeing her attention diverted, the wolves must have decided now was a good time to resume their hunt for dinner. Reagan fired at them, but it didn't stop them this time. He didn't have much choice. Try to shift and live, or sprinkle salt on himself for a tasty appetizer. He lifted Reagan around the waist. Get up in the tree! She dropped the blaster and grabbed onto a thick branch, swinging her feet onto another. Barely keeping his balance, he staggered away from her. He heard her screaming, but couldn't make out the words. His plan had worked to draw the killers away from his mate, but now he had to save himself. She had bought him precious time to get his head on straight, and he wasn't going to waste the effort. He stumbled again, and the pack tightening around him pounced. Reagan screamed behind him. If any wolf got its teeth into him, he wasn't sure, but he did feel the impact of each animal as his dragon exploded into its form, sending each wolf too close flying back through the air. Any remaining scattered. Carefully, he turned to find the branch his mate was on. There was barely enough room for him to maneuver his tail without knocking into a tree. He lowered a paw, and she jumped into it. From there, he lifted into the air to see Davin not too far, also in dragon form, hovering with the damaged transport in both claws. Rise tilted his head toward the estate, and Davin nodded. Hopefully, the flight home would be much less eventful. Chapter 29 Brazen knew the moment the borders of the neutral zone security system were breached. The magic he weaved into the tech served as a ward linked to his own dragon power. It didn't stop anyone from entering the area, but it did slow down those who wished to do harm. It also alerted him and the enforcers once the rogues broke through. We have about ten beats before they break through completely. Brazen stood at the front line facing the point where Arden or whoever it was pushed against the invisible barrier. Then the hairs on the back of his neck stood on end. He felt the nudge on a different point on the wards. Someone is coming in the north section. Then another one. East. Brazen cursed. West. He called for those at the festival to pick a direction and fight. That brought the gathering to a halt, seeing they were all males and hated Arden. What the fuck was Arden doing? The air shifted and electrified around them. Brazen whirled around just as Arden materialized in the center of the festival grounds. In his hands was the lost grimoire of the Graxicon. Brazen fisted his hands and growled. Whatever Arden had planned with that book wasn't good. Cedric used it to kill their females, damning the planet to die out. Was that Arden's ultimate goal? Follow in Cedric's footsteps? Not happening. You are outnumbered, Arden. Brazen pulled his blaster from the holster and clicked the safety off. 
It won't take long for my army to break the barriers of the wards. Then it will be you who will be outnumbered. Arden laughed, and when Brazen and the others raced toward him, he formed a magical bubble around himself, blocking them out. Shade straightened his spine at Brazen's side and spoke into his mic that linked them and the enforcers together. Sky Eyes, how many? A few dozen at least. Fuck, that didn't help. There could be more that were hidden, waiting to attack. Quill, you got any more rebels coming? On the way, we need to get that book from Arden before he performs a spell from it. They need to make it quick, Shade barked into the mic. Voss stepped up between him and Shade. Brazen glanced down at Voss's arm. He wore a jewel-encrusted band around his wrist. Like the queen's crown, Voss's wristband held the royal power that ran through his bloodline. Good, because Brazen knew they needed every bit of power they could get. Arden opened the book and he levitated several feet off the ground, the magic circle following him. A blast of white energy shot out in all angles around him. Tables, booths, and chairs launched into the air, exploding into pieces. At first, Brazen thought Arden had disappeared. When the air cleared inside the circle, Brazen saw Arden was still there. Arden flipped through the books, then stopped and looked directly at Voss with an evil smirk. The air charged with a power stronger than Brazen had ever felt before. That wasn't good. Brazen backed up and motioned for the others to do the same. Keon rushed up to them and focused on Voss. My lord, you need to- Voss held up a hand. I didn't hide out during the war. I'm not doing so now. This ends tonight. Anyone have ideas on breaking that fucking bubble? Arden started reading from the book in the Graxicon language. Lightning cracked across the sky and clouds darkened and swirled over Arden's head. A storm? He's calling a storm? Brazen glanced at his brothers in arms. Or opening a portal, Shade added. To where, I have no fucking clue. Shade faded into his shadow form, then disappeared. A few moments later, he fell from the sky onto his back. Fuck. Brazen knelt down beside him. What did you do? I thought I could go through the circle in shadow form. He rolled to a stand. I was wrong. Bounced off the fucker like a rubber ball. We can try blasters to see if we can weaken it. Lightning struck the community center, sending sparks and singed metal everywhere. Another bolt slammed into the ground a few yards away. A force of invisible energy blew everyone off their feet. A few shifters closer to ground zero didn't get up. Brazen felt the wards crash down, and Arden's army ran in, teeth bared, claws digging into the soft earth. Bloodlust shined in their eyes almost as if each shifter were out of their minds. It reminded him too much of Cedric at the end. Quill's soldiers pulled their weapons and created a wall around the men, fighting to keep the enemy at bay while they dealt with Arden. Brazen looked at Voss and Shade. That's it. We use the blaster and Voss's magic to hit the circle from all sides at once. We need to make sure there's no crossfire while we're shooting at it. Keon pulled his blaster, aimed, and fired. Arden was unaffected. He didn't even acknowledge the strike. He glanced at Brazen. What the fuck just happened? Brazen pulled his blaster and fired. The stream went right through the circle and Arden as if the bastard wasn't there. Shade, you said you bounced off something. Yeah. Shade looked from Brazen to Arden. Was it a solid form, or was it like being in the hollow sin? Shade's features turned fierce. Fuck, he's not here. Voss cursed, then turned and started running before he shifted into his dragon and took flight. Brazen glanced at Keon and Shade. He's at the estates, right where we sent the fucking surrogates. Damn it. Quill's string of curses came over their earpieces. I'm redirecting the rebels to the estate. 
They should meet you there. I'll stay with Madden and Azar to take care of the shitheads here. Good. Brazen shifted and leaped into the air, flying toward where they sent their females to keep them safe. Chapter 30 Lightning flashed and cracked around them as Rise and Davin landed next to the royal garage. Davin carefully set the crashed bus on the grass first. Reagan ran to the vehicle to check on the ladies. After they were hit and Rise was thrown from the bus, Reagan didn't remember how she got out, just seeing him lying on the ground. Cuts and blood covered his face, along with gashes in his clothes. Her only thought was to get him back to safety. When she looked into his eyes as he lay, she saw his eyes were unfocused and dilated. She'd had enough concussions diagnosed to recognize the symptoms immediately. Even though his animal would heal him, he needed time for that to happen. Hearing growling behind her, she just snatched the blaster from Ryza's hand and started shooting. All she knew to do was point and click. After taking out a couple wolves, she decided she liked that weapon better than the sword she had earlier. She was highly relieved when her mate was healed enough to take over the rescue. She'd had about all she could physically take. On the flight to the mansion, she relaxed, but she knew it wasn't over yet. Kat was helping Vanessa and Gianna out a bus door that had been ripped off its hinges. Reagan put her arm around Vanessa. You okay? Vanessa nodded. Yeah, our seatbelts kept us in place. We're just a little shaken. How did you get out your window so damn fast? Gianna asked her. She shrugged. I don't even recall getting out. Rise came up to the ladies. How about you all go inside and make sure the surrogates are in a safe place? Gianna nodded. We have a panic room for times like this. We'll hole up in there and pretend nothing is going on out here. She smiled weakly. Reagan knew their queen didn't mean that the way it sounded, but she was glad they had a safe place to stay while a battle raged on the other side of the walls. Reagan walked the women to the door into the garage and told them she'd be there in a little while. She wanted to stay out with the men to see what she could do. She was happily surprised that Arden and his men hadn't shown up. Maybe she was wrong with her guess that he would come after the surrogates. You're sure? Riza's voice came to her. I don't see any sign of him. She guessed Rise was talking about Arden. She headed to the front of the house and stopped in her tracks. Arden sat inside a magical circle, speaking a language Reagan had never heard. Rise walked up behind her, talking into his calm. We just got here. He saw her and frowned, then saw what she had been staring at. Just found him. He paused. He's inside a bubble. After another pause, he said, got it. Then he said to her, you're safer inside. She shook her head. I'm not fragile, and there is no reason I can't be out here to help fight that bastard and stop whatever he is doing. She glanced at Arden. What is he doing? At that second, a huge bolt of lightning shot down from the sky and blew apart a tree. Rise covered her, dragging her up against the house. I'd really like you to go inside. I'll stay covered. What is he saying? Rise listened for a moment. Don't know. It's Graxaconian. He looked up at the roiling clouds that quickly swallowed the moon. I think he's creating a lightning storm. Not sure why. He placed a blaster in her hand. Brazen, Voss, and Shade are on their way here. Braze has a theory that if we continually shoot at the bubble from different points, it will weaken. He, Voss, and Shade will blast it with dragonfire from the sky. We are to blast it from the sides. Chapter 31 Reagan nodded, then thought about the ammo. When she opened her mouth to ask, Rise conjured a vest. He put it on her. It was heavy, and she tapped on it, feeling the strange material. Bullet, uh, blaster proof? Yeah, I'm not losing you. He kissed her hard, then patted the pockets on the vest. There are extra cartridges in there. Got it. 
Lightning flashed overhead, and a bolt touched down a few yards from them. Reagan stared at Rise wide-eyed. We need our own bubble. He frowned at her, then his eyes lit up. You're brilliant. Rise rushed down the sidewalk toward their house. Davin came up beside her. Where is he going? I don't know. I mentioned we needed our own bubble, and he ran off. Davin nodded. Brazen has little spheres that can link together to create a force field. I hope he has enough. He scanned the area and growled. Normally, Reagan would shy away from him because his presence was dark. But when he protected her from the blast of fire Rise and Brazen created at the old building, Reagan saw Davin's concern. She knew right away that he could never hurt her or anyone he cares about. Plus, in their current situation, she was sure Davin was the last one to be afraid of. Arden's fuckheads are coming. I can smell them. Follow me. Davin walked a few yards out from where they were and glanced up at Arden where he levitated. Stand here and aim for the book. Just then, a black and silver dragon touched down and folded his wings on his back, right before he shifted to his humanoid form and crossed the yard to Davin. The man looked similar to Keon, and Reagan wondered if that was his dad. Rise returned with his hands full and called to the man, confirming Reagan's guess. Drex, catch! Rise tossed a palm-sized metal ball to him and then one to Davin. When more men showed, Rise gave a few of them a sphere, then jogged over to her. He pressed a button in the top of the ball, and it lit up and floated out of his hand to hover in the air. Drex has soldiers and enforcers around the perimeter holding back Arden's army. Turning to face her, he kissed her, then stared at her for a long moment. I can't talk you into going inside. Not a chance. The more people we have out here blasting at Arden's circle, the faster we can break through it. Reagan faced Arden and focused on the book in his hand. Then she imagined it was Greg. And he was going down, and she was going to enjoy killing that part of her life all over again. The sounds of fighting along the edge of the property grew louder, and she worried it would reach them before they took care of Arden. No, don't think like that. We will win this. Within minutes, Rise and the other men, dragons, wolves, and cats, positioned themselves in a large circle and faced Arden. The metal balls were in place behind each of them, and a sheer magical force field snapped into place around them. Glancing up, she saw Brazen, Voss, and Shade's dragons form a circle above Arden. The storm grew fiercer, and lightning snapped all around. The air charged with electricity that made the hair on her body stand, and she could only imagine what her unruly red curls were doing. Another time that would have been amusing. Right then wasn't the time. Now or never. As if having the same thought, Davin gave the command to shoot. Now. Together they pulled their triggers and held them for a steady stream of power to flow from the blaster. Blue stream shot up from the blasters, hitting the circle while orange and yellow fire hit Arden's circle from above. What seemed like several minutes passed, and the circle didn't appear to be weakening. Panic settled in, and Reagan feared this would be the end. She'd lose her mates and the life she always longed for. Then she saw it. A weakness in the magic bubble. Tiny fragments splintering off in different directions. She moved her stream to one of the cracks, and it grew larger. Rise, the cracks! He nodded and did the same. One by one, the others did the same, until the circle walls were a spider web of cracks. One of those little bombs would have been nice right then. She remembered Rise had placed a few in her pockets when on the bus. She didn't use them all. She pulled one out, then dropped her blaster. She heard Rise yell at her, but she didn't have time to explain. She ignited it and threw it with everything she had. Get down! As soon as everyone hit the ground, the bomb blew, the blast rebounding and breaking the windows of the main house. 
the bomb did exactly what she hoped. The circle was gone, and Arden fell to the ground. The book hid a few yards away. One of the enforcers grabbed it up, but it was too late to counter whatever Arden did. Brazen, Voss, and Shade landed moments later and shifted while conjuring clothes. They charged Arden with Davin and Rise. Everything after that happened so fast. Someone yelled to get down. Rise and Brazen either didn't hear it, which was unlikely, or they didn't see the danger. Arden raised his hands and electric bolts shot from his palms. Reagan screamed as she watched her mates fall to the ground, and their pain flooded the mating bond, pulling at her soul. No! She crumbled to her knees, tears streaming down her face. Chapter 32 Fury brewed inside her. Arden wouldn't get away with taking her mates. She locked her gaze on him and growled. She pulled another bomb from her pocket and marched across the yard. Arden was focused on battling Voss with his own form of magic, and Shade, who was still in dragon form, shooting fire at Arden. With Arden's arms raised, a searing white light shot toward Shade, and he roared. His fire stopped as he fell from the sky. His wings spread in time to keep him from crashing into the trees. He disappeared from sight. Her rage grew the closer she got, unlocking all the bottled-up pain and anger from deep in her soul. Everything around her melted away, and all she saw was her target— the bastard that would pay for hurting what was hers. She could still feel her mates inside her. Their life energy was faint, but they were there. Hold on, my mates. Arden's electric stream of power was pushing against a line of power coming from Voss's bracelet. Where the powers touched, sparks flew, and she smelled burning air. With a flick from his other hand, small balls of light flew from the tips and slammed into Voss. The king was knocked off his feet and crashed into a statue in the yard. That's what Arden had been doing with the book and storm. He was giving himself the power to shoot lightning whenever he wished. How could you stop that? Even the dragons in the air couldn't stop him. With no one moving, Reagan realized she was the only one here. The rest fought on the perimeter against Arden's army. Arden let out a cackle that would make Vincent Price proud. He raised his arms and light so bright shot out that she had to look away. With that kind of power, he would easily take over the planet. She caught a bit of movement where Voss landed. Hope felt her. Maybe the king would catch on. Hey, Arden. She cocked her hip and bounced the bomb in her hand, tossing it up in the air and catching it. He turned to her and grinned. Well, what do we have here? Do you think you're faster than me? No, she wasn't stupid. She was causing a distraction. Voss eased into her sight behind Arden. She tried not to pay the Dragon King too much attention. She tilted her head, and an eerie calm went over her. I don't have to be faster than you. But he does, she pointed to Voss. Arden twisted around, and she hit the strike on the bomb and threw it, then ran as far from the blast as she could. 
Davin tackled her to the ground before it hit. She curled into a ball under him. The ground shook and she felt heat. Poor Davin had to be cooking. When it was over, she glanced up. Are you okay? He chuckled and stood. I was going to ask you the same, but I'm fine. The back stings a little, but I heal a lot faster than you. She guessed he was right, but it still made her feel bad. Then she thought of Voss. Oh no, Voss? Keon got him, he's safe. Davin motioned to Voss and Keon near the front entrance of the house. Davin touched her arm. It was a light touch, but it got her attention. That was quick thinking. Thank you, you are a hero. She didn't feel like one. The only thing she could think of was protecting her mates and her new family. Arden was crazy. Glancing to her mates, now with Madden and another healer leaning over them, she started crying again, then noticed how quiet it got. The fighting stopped. Davin scanned the area. You're right. He offered a hand and she took it. He pulled her to her feet, then he gave her a nod before jogging over to Drex and Voss. Soon she found herself surrounded by her friends, the women she started this journey with, her new family. They each drew her into hugs. Gianna took her hands and squeezed. Thank you so much. It's finally over. Arden got what he deserved. Katrina agreed. He sure did. His own cockiness was his end. Shade came up behind Katrina and hugged her, drawing her into him so her back pressed against his front. After you take care of your mates, we should celebrate. Hell, we should declare this day a holiday. We'll call it the Death of Arden Day. Reagan and the girls laughed. Thank you all, but we don't need a holiday. I'm not sure how I feel right now. It was like killing Greg all over again. She was relieved it was all over, happy that he would never harm anyone else, and sick to her stomach that she took a life. And her mates almost died. The thought of Rise and Brazen brought on more tears. She excused herself from her friends and rushed over to her mates. She knelt and asked Madden, how are they? Madden frowned. They took a hard hit of electricity, but they'll be okay. The other healer, Reagan had seen before but couldn't remember his name, gave her a short nod in greeting. I'm Castian, the Wintervale healer. She gave a weak smile. Nice to meet you. Madden covered her hand. We're going to take them to the clinic. She shook her head. Can you just take them home? Yeah, they'll be closer to me anyway, and they will need to feel you with them. Madden motioned for Castian and another male who came over to help move them. Reagan understood what Madden meant about Rise and Brazen needing to feel her close. They would need to draw from her energy through the mating bond until they healed. She stood and moved back so they could lift her mates, then followed the healers to the house. She went in first and led them upstairs to the master bedroom. After they laid her guys in bed and Madden did a final scan with his healing magic, she walked them out and thanked them. Madden held back and waited for them to be alone. Is there anything you need? Are you hurt anywhere? I can send Vanessa over. Thank you, but I just need my mates to heal. If things change, I'll call. Surprising her, Madden drew her into a hug. They need time. He pulled back and locked gazes with her. But you need to eat and rest. I'll have the house staff bring you breakfast in the morning. Thank you. When Madden left, she went upstairs, showered, and crawled into bed between her guys, not bothering to put pajamas on. She needed to feel her guys as close as she could, because they were hers and she wasn't letting them go. She placed a kiss on each of their lips before snuggling between them under the covers. Sleep came fast, and she welcomed it. Chapter 33 It had been two days since Reagan thought she lost her mates and the death of the rogue alpha. 
things seem to be returning to normal despite all the cleanup around the estates. The windows in the main house were replaced the following morning, but there was some structural damage that needed to be dealt with. There was also a sense of happiness in the air. It was the only way she knew how to explain it. Everyone seemed content, more at ease, like peace had finally settled in around the planet. Reagan tried to apologize for destroying part of the house, but Voss wouldn't hear it. He told her the lives of his people and family mattered more. Not to mention Arden was dead and could no longer be a threat. Rise stirred at her back and snaked an arm around her waist. Morning, mate. Morning. She took a deep breath and exhaled slowly. She was surprised how fast they recovered, although she felt they weren't at a hundred percent yet. They were alive, and that was all she cared about. Voss wants to have a meeting. Both guys groaned, and she laughed. We get to join via video chat and from our bed. She sat up and clicked the remote to the wireless screen and typed in the password for the chat on the tablet. Soon, Voss and the whole council appeared on screen. Hi. Voss nodded. Glad to see you three resting. Brazen chuckled and pulled the covers over his head. Voss shook his head and his lips lifted into a smile. I will make this short. I wanted to answer any questions and let you know what happened after you were shot with that bolt. Brazen sat up but leaned into Reagan. Where's the grimoire? Jericho answered. Voss, Micah, and I took it back to the Graxicon. They were grateful and now owe us a debt for recovering the book. That surprised us since they generally stick to themselves and don't like outsiders. Voss added, we discovered that Arden had his army under some kind of trance spell. That was why he had such a large number in his army. Once he died, they were released from the spell. I'm working on integrating the wolves into Wintervale, and Micah is taking in the cats. It's not going to be easy, and we expect some resistance. Jericho paused and glanced at Micah. Micah rocked back in his chair. It'll all work out. From what I heard, they are tired of the divide and are ready for a combined government, which was why the council was formed in the first place. So that's a step in the right direction. Rise yawned and asked, What about the surrogates? Are they all okay? Voss nodded. They are settling in nicely. While we were fighting outside, Gianna, Katrina, and Vanessa were in a secure vault, giving them a little mating 101 and whatever else females talk about when together. Katrina rolled her eyes. We had to make sure they knew what they are in for. Anyway, the welcome event will be held in a few weeks. We want the dust from the fight to settle. Besides, there was some structural damage in the NZ as well. We really should come up with a proper name for the area, it's not really the neutral zone anymore. It's more like a village now that everyone can use. I agree, Micah said. Then the rest of the council nodded. Katrina smiled wide. Great, we'll each come up with some names and vote on it in our next meeting. And on that note, we'll let you three go. See you soon. Katrina cut off the video and Reagan snuggled down between her mates. I could sleep for a week, you guys are stressful. Rise poked her ribs, making her jump and squeal at the same time. That reminds me, Davin said you threw a bomb at Arden and nearly got hit with it. If he hadn't covered you... Reagan pressed her finger to his lips. He was there. If he wasn't there, then Voss or any of them would have done the same as he did. Besides, I didn't think about me. I wanted Arden dead because I thought I lost you guys. You're not getting rid of us that easily. Brazen kissed her neck and hugged her close. I'm so happy Rise stole you from the wolves. Me too, Rise and Reagan said at the same time. Reagan glanced at both of them and cupped each of their cheeks. I love you both. You helped me believe in a future again. Brazen kissed her and nuzzled her neck while inhaling. Then he jerked his head up and stared down at her, and her pulse increased. She frowned at him. What? 
A brilliant smile formed on his face. You're pregnant. What? You're sure? Rise frowned and smelled her hair. Is that what that is? I noticed your scent had changed. It's sweeter and lighter with a hint of something I can't place. His features brightened and he sat up. I'm going to be a dad. We're going to be dads. And Reagan a mom. Her heart swelled and she thought it might burst with happiness. I don't know how to explain how I feel. Rise and Brazen surrounded her, both men holding her tight. Our lives have meaning because of you, love. She gulped. I never really believed I'd find love. True love? And how do you feel now? Rise asked. You're our life, beautiful, our present and our future. The past doesn't matter now. Just you, Brazen said. Warmth filled her deep. God, I love you. I love you both so much. It's like the entire universe lit up in my heart. We'll always be careful with your love. You don't ever have to worry we will mistreat or take you for granted. Rise kissed her softly. You're our one, our only. Brazen brushed his lips over her shoulder. Or forever. She sniffled. Those are the sweetest words. I love you both. We love you too, mother of our young. This concludes Dragon's Prize by Millie Tayden. Narrated by Elizabeth Russell. Copyright 2019 by Millie Tayden. This unabridged audiobook is published by arrangement with Millie Tayden, care of Stone Song, and was produced in the year 2021 by Tantor Media Incorporated, a division of recorded books, which holds the copyright thereto. Please visit Tantor.com for more information on our growing library of unabridged audiobooks.